joining. I am here with Victory X for episode three of Halo History. Without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Cam, Victory X, Thorlaxen. That's right. How you doing, man? Not too bad, man. How are you? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Seems how I'm ten levels higher than you right now. I just know you're a lowly level one. This is my first, uh, my first rodeo here. <laughs> So uh, tell me, tell me how. All right, first off, we we got together on what day was it? Like Thursday? That was Friday. Friday? Friday. On Friday, so not too long ago. Hung out, played some two v two octagons, played some Mario Party, did some old school games, did some like weird dice games and pong. Hold on, quick on the dice. I wouldn't say it was weird if I were you. It was a pretty awesome game. <laughs> not gonna lie, but did some did some games that are out of the norm. But anyways, I heard a story from Coach Moo, a.k.a. The Great Moo, a.k.a. Cam Webley, not the same as Victory X. He said that when you two started playing out, I guess you two went to the same high school, something along those lines, and you guys have met at some point, and Webley says that he was better than you starting out, and he said that you played one sensitivity starting out. Can you confirm or deny both of those? <laughs> both of those? <laughs> you can take them individually, but uh, I'd like a confirmation or denial of both of those. That he was the move was either better than you, and if you played on one sensitivity. All right, I'll, I'll go in chronological order here. <laughs> he was better than me first. Uh, I gotta give him. I'll give him the nod on that one. He was. All right, all right. That's the first time I ever played Halo was probably when when Halo One came out. Doesn't three? Uh, Halo One came out. I want to say in two thousand one or two thousand and two. Well, I played that like probably two or three times at family get-togethers. That was it on Halo One. So okay. I sucked at that. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, uh, I didn't play Halo Two until, like two weeks after it came out. Okay. I never owned an Xbox till then, so he was definitely uh, a couple years ahead of me at that point. Okay. So he, he had the he had the head start. So you're saying they're better, but I saw I heard all the excuses saying That's right. were, what reasons he was better. Behind me. Behind me! But yeah, I'll give him the nod, he was better. Alright. Better cam at that point. About <laughs> it. As far as the one sense goes... Uh, yeah, one sensitivity, that's the one that I was more uh, interested in hearing about. Yeah, so... Uh, I guess when I first started playing, I mean... It's true. <laughs> I was definitely a one sense player. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. He did mention the the elite part as well. Almost got ninja. Almost got ninja. This Halo history episode might have been deleted if that happened right there. Yeah, I was your classic online one sense elite run around back in 2004. So I was talking to Webley's dad, and he brought up he's a so I don't even know what Webley's dad does. I think he's a doctor or surgeon or something along those lines, but. He's a surgeon. Well, either way, he was mentioning how he kind of gets into Halo, kind of learned about it quite a bit. He's like, you know what? I was uh, trying to talk to Cam and figure out why one sense. He's like, you know, what if they get behind you? And he said your response to that was, they don't get behind me. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much the only response that sounds cool when you talk about it, so that makes sense. Because <laughs> if they do get behind you, it'll take you about probably a year and a half to turn around. <laughs> That's a trade-off. You don't miss shots, but it also takes you quite a bit to uh, turn around and straight and all that. So. All right. So for those uh, out there wondering right now if they should play at one sensitivity, would you recommend it or no? <laughs> or what do you play uh, nowadays? I think it on a case-by-case -case basis. <laughs> if you're uh, if you're shot, maybe need some help. Maybe try, try out the one. All right. Well, maybe I should try out the one because I'm at zero kills. But. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! What's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> um, my kills keep getting stolen, man. No, I, I mean, I don't know how the, uh, how the like, uh, acceleration works from 1 to 2 is 2 double 1. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Uh, it's, I, I'd have to it probably it. feels like double, but... That's for sure. There's gotta be someone I was gonna say hiding right around this corner. I'm still waiting on you to get a kill here. Yeah, we, we are gonna stop asking questions and first wait until I get a kill. Snipe somebody for you and like we <laughs> I saw a donation from Harlem. I will check that out a little later. 
try not to do those on Halo histories, but thank you so much, Harlem. Hope you're doing well, Justin. Actually, I think you may have met Harlem before. Actually, no. That was a different land at my place. Wouldn't doubt it, man. Uh, but, I've seen a lot of people over the years. Okay, so tell me how your first tournament scene started out, because I, I feel like I somewhat already know your history, so I should probably let you tell it, but um, <laughs> I hear that... Well, alright, I'll, I'll first mention my first experience against Victory X that I can remember was losing, well, the, one of the most memorable ones is losing to you in a local, whereas me, Pac, Dirt, and Metallic Aqua oh, that was against Port Huron. You, yep, Port Huron. It was you, Shao, Tarion, and Mu, right? Uh, I don't know if that's right. Actually, I think it yeah, was, right? That was it, yeah. Okay, so how did you, uh, how did you team up with Shao and Tarion? How did you... <laughs> <laughs> meet up with Moo? How would you meet up with Matthew eventually? I think that's what everyone wants to know. So, after the first few months of Halo, I, I had no idea what MLG was. I mean, I never followed in Halo 1 or anything. Like I said, I hadn't played Halo 1 too often in the first place. So, I started playing Halo 2 probably in like December or January. I think it came out in November, right? Okay. Before. Yeah, so that's when I started playing it. Played a lot with Moo, of course. The one who got me into it. And then, uh,. So he was the first to introduce you to Halo, period. Like, did you have your own Xbox before meeting Moo, or no? Uh, I think I got my first Xbox. So you already had your own Xbox, and then you met up with, like, Moo or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay, got gotcha. Xbox in, like, December, and then, I, I mean, I met, I had met Moo before through school, because I'd gone to school with him since second grade. <laughs> Jeez. But, uh, yeah, I never really, uh, he was a grade ahead of me, so I never really, like, met with him or anything. But anyways, probably in, like, March or something the following year, I don't, I don't even know, I guess people were talking about it at school and saying they are going to meet up at school and play Halo or something. <laughs> Got you interested? Yeah. yeah. And I heard that him and his buddies played a lot, so I'm like, oh, that's cool, maybe they'll let me play. At this time, <laughs> I was still pretty bad, of course. Elite, one sense. You're an average run-of-the-mill noob back then. <laughs> yeah, I, I, would, I would agree. Level 10 or something. No other weird settings, though, right? Just, like, default or something? <laughs> I think that was it. Hopefully. Okay. <laughs> Just making sure, in case, in case we're unearthing, like, even... More horrendous part of a story, like you're playing like South Paul Legacy or something yeah, like that. Yeah, Legacy business. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so I ended up playing with him uh, a little bit online, and I was actually not too bad. Yeah. So eventually he ended up inviting me out to like a, a like a LAN party, I guess, with him and his like brother and a couple of friends, Brendan, who you met. Yep, yep. And uh, I actually was holding my own there. So uh, <laughs> after a while, probably in like just. In 2005, uh, there was this land center in Southfield. I don't know if you ever went there. It's called Planet X. I don't think I've been to Planet X. I I've been to like Port the Port Huron spot. I've been to oh my gosh, let me get on the back. Uh, I don't remember all the different land centers I went to around Michigan, but um, yeah, I definitely remember the Port Huron spot. I remember Livewire. Yeah, Port Huron. Um, Lansing, yeah, those are the two main ones I truly remember. Yeah. So but. anyways, it was, uh, I mean. They used to have 2v2 tournaments all the time. They get a decent turnout, probably like 30, 40 teams. Yeah, that's huge, actually. Yeah. But anyways, uh, it was like mid-2005, we ended up going to one of those. And <laughs> we actually did pretty well, but we actually ended up making it up to the finals. But as history goes, guess we lost it. <laughs> Who did you lose to? Who do you think? Um. This was pre-Macchio days. Pre-Macchio days. Pre-Macchio. Shao and Tarion? Shao and Tarion. Yeah? <laughs> so, for a little background for everybody who's watching and doesn't know who these guys are, <laughs> they were uh, twin brothers. They what is about twins and Halos, man? Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't think I've heard of a single set of twins in Call of Duty or in like Counter Strike or any of these other games. But That's Halo, cool, Halo attracts the twins, right? <laughs> Somehow. I guess so. <laughs> but yeah, these guys, uh, they're actually pretty good, and uh, they went under like the team name. GOW, I'm not sure what it stands for, God's War thing. But anyway, is there a GOW, Tau, Shao, Yeah, I'm trying to think, if Shao and Tyrion are those, like, mythological god names, by chance? Maybe? Possibly. That sound, it sounds something godlike. I've never really looked into the origin of their names. Yeah. <laughs> this phone can do, uh, do some research for us in the Twitch chat, let us know. Totally if that's true. Totally over that law, so. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, we end up losing the Shao and Tyrion, and this would be two. And then, later on that year, was the, uh, Port Huron. Or before, it was actually for a good amount of money. I think it was for a thousand bucks. Yeah. 
the first. <laughs> it definitely was worth a decent amount of money, because otherwise I don't think I would have attended a, the local. Yeah. Um, what I was going to ask was, oh, so at this point, did you already know about, like, MLG or MLG tournaments? Uh, then, after... Yeah, because uh, this was probably early 2005 that I went to the Planet X, and that, that's when I first, like, learned about it at that tournament. Okay, so you'd heard through them, like, oh, wow, like, this is a pretty big tournament. Are there bigger ones out there? And people started talking about, like, MLG, I'm, I'm assuming. Yep, definitely. That's what happened. Alright, so tell us, uh, tell us what happened at this, uh, Port Huron event. Oh. Uh, I don't know if you want to relive this experience or not. I don't want to, but we, we've already gone there, so let's, uh, let's, <laughs> let's go through this. Alright, so Port Huron, this is probably, this, this is either early 2005, like, right after the time, actually, mid 2005, I believe. But anyways, we hear about the Stars and Dollar Tournament, this is pretty huge, like, the first notable tournament that I've, that I've attended up, up until this point. So, uh, four before a tournament in Fort Huron, Michigan, this place called Extreme Gaming, I think. Okay. I guess that doesn't matter. Anyways. Yeah, I can't remember the exact name of the spot. Um, I think it was Extreme, Extreme Gaming. Yeah. Something like that. Anyways, so I show up with my team, which of course is me, Furious Moo, and then the GOW boys, Shao and Tarion, because they had just beaten us in my last tournament. <laughs> hey, these guys are the best around here, you know, why not team up with them, let's go win this thing. <laughs> and then, like, a couple weeks before the tournament, or like a week before, I hear that Walsh is going, I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> and, and this, I have a chance to think, but he's going, then I also hear that, like, Tupac and Slimmer going, and I've heard those names by this point. That have been around that. I've yeah, yeah, there are huge names in Michigan, and even in the MLG scene, like, they were always placing near the top. Right, so I, I got wind that they were gonna gonna show up, but I, I guess I didn't really know who their fourth was. But I guess that wasn't readily available yet. <laughs> I don't know if you didn't know or you know, my second. But anyways, we get to the tournament, for my team, and I find out that it's Walshy, Dirtmiger, aka Slim, Tupac, and Metallic Aqua. <laughs> I'm like these guys, these three guys and a girl. Is <laughs> like a thousand bucks online? This is an interesting move. Yeah, it was a questionable move. I just remember at the time, Pac just being like, oh yeah, like we got a, we asked Aqua to be on the team. And I was like, oh, I didn't really fully approve this because like, I already said I was for sure with like Dirt and Pac. And he's like, oh dude, it's a local. Just a bunch of randies. We're going to win for sure. I was like, all right, sounds good. Yeah. And uh, I don't remember what second place was. Like it wasn't, I don't remember how they would always divide the, the payouts. Like my guess is probably second place was maybe what, like 400? Would be my guess at the most. Yeah. yeah, four or five hundred. So, well, either way, we we had three top players, like me, Pac, and Dirt. So, I, like, I believed it. I was like, you know what? Whatever. I don't. It really doesn't matter who our fourth is. We can probably carry anyone to victory at this point. Um, and run to you guys. And that wasn't quite the case. I don't. I don't know if we took games off you at all. I don't remember how the full series went. Did you guys just sweep us, or do you remember how it went at all? Uh, I, I don't exactly remember. I don't either. I have a feeling it wasn't a sweep for the fact, like, I feel like I would have remembered a sweep. Yeah, you probably, I think you guys probably, I think you guys we probably, probably took a game or two or something. I think I remember that happening. <laughs> and we're just like, come on, find the hider, find the hider. <laughs> but we didn't have enough time, of course. Uh, but anyways, uh, we ended up winning the tournament. So that was cool. And I was like, oh, damn, did I finally, like, my first tournament against some big names, and I win. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got this. I'm guaranteed first, like, when I go to the major events now, right? I'm going to go with the grain of salt, of course, if you did have a girl on your team. <laughs> Not saying girl gamers aren't bad, or aren't good, but... But she wasn't the greatest girl gamer. Yeah, I don't think she, like, ever played or anything, so... No, I don't, I don't know uh, who knew her well. Like, I believe Pac or Dirt knew her very well, yeah. so... But anyways, it, uh, before that, by the way... There's actually, I believe it's a free crawl that seeds the thing, seeds the tournament. And I recall it was midship, and it was, we were in one of the bubbles. And it was like, me and you were like neck and neck for like first and second. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw you car three, and I was running at you, and I'm like, flashing the back of my mind, like, dude, this guy, he's like claws. <laughs> it's like a close combat battle, but I'm like, screw it, man, I'm gonna charge anyway. <laughs> so I charged at him, and guess what, dude? You got BXR? Out BXR the wall. Wait, you out BXR'd me? I did. Oh. It was the highlight of my weekend. <laughs> Possibly my life up until this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was cool. I wasn't expecting that. Good start to the tournament. 
That's funny. So, wait, um, one thing we didn't cover actually is how did you even get your gamer tag? Where did victory come from? Oh, well, this is, uh, I think at that point I was still flawless victory. Flawless victory, okay. Like, is that Mortal Kombat? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah, I'm not even the biggest Mortal Kombat fan, I thought it sounded cool. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where that came from. Uh, the X that we played so like 2006. Was the X by choice, or was it because you got on uh, Xbox Live and like all the tags were taken? It was by choice. So here's what happened. Uh, 2006, I guess we're gonna fast forward here for this story. Okay. So I was actually. I just started playing with like Ant 12, you know, remember Ant? Classic yeah, yeah, Classic Ant, yeah. And we were gonna make a, like a clan, I guess, a clan or a team. And we were all gonna have X's at the end of our name. That's so cool. Oh, that is pretty cool. <laughs> so, actually, he had, he had a friend that worked for Microsoft or Xbox Live or something that could change our gamer tags and um, just like for free so we didn't have to pay like five bucks or ten bucks or whatever it was back then because that was yeah. a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dude, how's he have a connection like that? I don't think I ever had any connection like that to say like, hey, dude, can you change my gear tag? Yeah. How do you pull that one off? About, but uh, we were in the middle of a, a double team game, I remember. And it was actually pretty intense because we were like some of the top ranked players back then at double team. You and Ant were? Yeah. We were playing up against like the Cuz guys, like Cuz Too Good. I don't know if you remember them. But I don't remember the Cuzzes. They were like online warriors. <laughs> and uh, it was Ascension 2v2. And was Banshee on the map? Oh yeah, of course. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and we were up by like five or something. And then I ended up getting kicked out because the guy ends up changing my gamer tag in the middle of the game. So <laughs> I'm kind of pissed about it, but my, that's when my gamer tag got changed to Victory X. <laughs> of course, Ants never ended up getting changed somehow, so I was going with the X. And <laughs> so it was just me. <laughs> so you just kind of stuck with that. Back. All right. So that's uh. One of the more unique stories I've heard to like someone's gamer tag was like, well, kind of went with the Mortal Kombat ending, and then uh, my my name just got kind of randomly changed for me one day, not by choice, and uh, there's my name now. That's my gamer tag. I could have just as easily been flawless X, but I decided to go with the victory. <laughs> I might regret it to this day. I don't know. <laughs> so should people call you Victory X anymore, or just Victory? Because I have I have his Victory X in the title right now. Ah, uh, either or, I guess. Either or, okay. My Twitch channel is Victory, but uh. <laughs> I noticed the I noticed the Twitter is C9 Victory, yeah, without I the X. Yeah, Victory X, but then I changed it. Oh really? For some reason, and then I could get it back. So. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like you're still indecisive, so you might you might even have another game tag change some point soon. So I'll uh, I'll have all the possible Twitter slash Twitch combinations that you might have. You gotta go put some of those on reserve right now. <laughs> All right, so we heard the story of your first local. We heard the story of how you got your gamer tag. We heard how you used to play in one sensitivity for some reason, and um, and is and is elite. I forgot, almost forgot that. And uh, we didn't hear about your first MLG tournament or who you went to the MLG tournament with. So what was your first oh, man, major major event, itself. and who are you with? This is kind of sucks. This story actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, first tournament uh, was later in that year, 2005. It was Chicago 2005. Okay. So I remember that event. I'll just, tell you my story after that one. I think uh, we played you guys in case you didn't know, by the way. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for remembering. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so it was, I guess 2005 was a big... Uh, I made a lot of progress that year. Yeah. It really rose up in the ranks. Anyways, uh, the team ended up being me, Moo, Tupac and Dirt. <laughs> oh, dang! Yeah, man, I, I took your took your local teammates right from under you. Yeah, dude, Pac and Dirt were. I one thing I wish I got a chance to was I really wish we could have made a team with them in Halo One. Obviously, I ended up making some really sick squads towards the end of Halo One, but before that, I was with a uh, a crew called PS or, or Psycho Soldiers, and it felt like a couple of us. Uh, by a couple of us, I mean like myself and Dragon Spear were quite a bit better than our third and fourth, um, who at the time were like Corrosion and Biggie. Biggie's, you know, improved quite a bit and whatever, but uh, compared to like Pac and Dirt, um, they weren't as good as them. I, I wanted at some point to team with them, but it's also weird. You have like this weird dynamic where everyone's laying together, everyone's like friends, and it's, yeah, we never got a chance to make that team happen. Um, but how did, uh, how did Pac and Dirt line up come about? 
from uh, meeting each other locals. Like, were we doing like lands at Livewire and stuff back then? I assume. Uh, you know, I guess yeah. It was just locally, and I guess they thought I was decent. Yeah. That also there was uh, you remember O L R Ruler. That sounds familiar. Uh, refresh my memory. Yeah, How would I know? Director, yes, I know. <laughs> I know director. <laughs> So, he kind of helped make that happen, huh? He kind of came to the scene, and he was like, well, you guys, if you guys team together. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I team together. Dude, so, um. Like, market our team is like a local, local thing. Like, like, sports team, you know, you thought it'd be really cool, a really cool idea to have like, local players go to town, you know? Yeah. I am going to, are you, do you have my stream open right now? Me? Yeah. Yeah. If you can open it, let me find a picture real quick, and you will tell me that this is definitely, uh, definitely whatever his name, director, his director. So, where is this picture? Come on, I'm probably not gonna be able to find it. Either way, we've we've come to the conclusion that he is uh, he's a character from Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> okay. The guy with like the cigar or whatever in Grand Theft Auto, like wearing the wife beater. <laughs> yep. He was also he's also the guy. So like he he was an interesting character. Like obviously very idiosyncratic with just like different things, like a cigar, just his voice, and just his like these different like cadences and like the way he spoke. But the fact that he. Um, he was like kind of before his time, if you think about it, where he had these ideas for like gaming houses and like he's like I want to like live stream. He's like I want to have a house with all these gamers and everyone's thinking like, uh, why why would we want to live together? Like what what would that accomplish? And you know, the, just the sponsorships and the visibility of pro gaming wasn't fully up there yet in North America, and so it kind of was definitely before his time. And he had always tried to want to get like some sort of mission team. I remember when my. Uh, when I ended up getting booed off Final Boss, he was one of the first person to email me. He's like, I want to create a full Michigan team with, you know, a gaming house, all these sort of things. Like, you would help, you know, bring this as possible. You know the talent that we have in Michigan, all that sort of stuff. And I kind of, well, not blew it off fully, but like I, you know, I, I responded saying like, you know, I'm not fully interested. Like, I already kind of figured out a new squad. But, um, yeah, he was... He was definitely kind of before his time with some of the gaming ideas, before the scene has fully developed. But So how did he help that team come about then? Or did he kind of sponsor the squad and yeah, have yeah, he, like a hotel or he, he entry fee? Own, like clan organization a little bit back then. Yeah. Uh, called OLR. Yep. It's exactly what it stands for. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so he ended up driving us all out to Chicago. And uh, he paid for our hotel to one night. I guess our team pass or whatever. He had all the stuff he had to buy back then. Yeah. And, uh, actually, so it was actually, there's heartbreak on the way to the tournament. The car broke? No, heartbreak. Uh, heartbreak, heartbreak on the way to the tournament. Oh, was it, um, I think I know what this heartbreak no was. <laughs> no spoilers, no spoilers. All right, so yeah, say your, say your lineup on the way to the tournament. All right, so <laughs> for about a month before Chicago 2005, the lineup is me, Serious Moo, SDK Tupac, and Dirt McGirt, aka Slam, whatever you want to call him, whatever you know him as. <laughs> We've been playing for probably a month, getting some solid practice, much good back then, I guess, being a noob team. <laughs> and uh, Tupac, luckily, he actually had an invite to, uh, I forgot what they called the bracket, but it was so we didn't have to go through the amateur bracket. We had an automatic. Uh, like a pro seed of some sort? Yeah, like it was like a seed conference, championship seed or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's right. They had like those regionals and everything yeah, back yeah. then. So. Chicago was like the, I think it was the last region before the finals or something. But anyways, we had an automatic game like Pac had been on check six or something earlier in the year, but he got booted because he had to go away and do something for a couple months. <laughs> 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 so he had an invite, so we're like, dude, that's sweet, man. We uh, we get to, you know, hop right into the pro bracket. We don't have to go through AM or anything. This guy just spun right behind him. Oh, and there's a guy, yeah, <laughs> top there. I need a dumb camel, though. <laughs> Yeah, so we had the invite straight to the pro bracket. So like, dude, all right, sweet. This is just another advantage of having Pac on the team. <laughs> so, the Thursday before the tournament, it starts on Friday, as usual. Yep. We, uh, getting ready. I think we all slept over at the director's house. And we leave Friday early in the morning to get there, Friday night. And 
as we're driving to Chicago Friday morning, you get a call from Hawk. And uh, director and shit. <laughs> and Hawk is on the other line, and he tells us that he's leaving the team. While we're on the way to the tournament, <laughs> to join Zaius' team. I think it was, it was straight ripping. Well, I wouldn't say it's Zaius' team, so my, my story actually kind of coincides with this story, believe it or not. Pac was uh, at my house, I think, the night this happened. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of saw this all, all unfolding yeah. from a different point of view. Yeah, so I guess, alright, I guess I can tell it then, because it was straight ripping then, right? Uh, I believe it's called Check Six, and okay. Zios had left the team pretty much the night before. Yep, he wanted to participate in that free for all thing that was going on alongside him with the Chicago, correct? There was a so there was a there was a battlefield tournament that he never confirmed he was part of. So basically, what was going on is there were kind of two battlefield events. One was something like a ridiculous amount, like close to I think a quarter million per first, supposedly. It was a ten-person game. Uh, and all the teams that were going there for Halo to play that match were just kind of thinking like, oh, well, we can find some land center and play from there. In short, like, since nine out of the ten of us were there, we decided like, hey, well, you know, we can't send them to find a land center. Everyone just kind of gave up on the Battlefield tournament. We also weren't sure as, as if, if it was sketchy or not or even going to pay out. And so we just kind of gave up on it because we obviously all were focused more so on Halo. But secondly, what happened the night before Chicago was um, there was this EB Games tournament going on for uh, it was it was a Battlefield 2 Modern Combat tournament. Um, first place was a Dodge a forty three thousand dollar Dodge Charger SRT8, um, and they had not gotten back or like responded in forever. Like basically, I, you had to do a uh, sorry for naming you, but um, you had to do a local event. There were sixty four local events, and then I believe there were something like eight regional events. So long story short is I had done my local event somewhere in Michigan. My regional event was supposed to be in Detroit, but there was also one in Chicago. And so we got the email the night before, or like two nights before, for this Battlefield event. And I instantly emailed back and said, hey, is there any way that I could um, play my regional event over in Chicago since I'll already be out there? They they allowed it. Now, my um, this was never 100% confirmed, but... My guess is that Zios also got that email night before, just never decided to check with them and decide, hey, you know what, I'll stay home, focus on the Battlefield event from, you know, like the team perspective, and then also go to my individual local event because he had to go to that regional somewhere near him. Um, and yeah, so Zios bailed out of the tournament, literally, like we're talking like the day before or something like that. And then that's where... Uh, <laughs> That's where Pac came into play to fill up that check, check six spot, and then what's that? You should email Zaius to let him know, man. Uh, well, that's the thing. I I remember hearing that, and I was like, I was like, I bet Zaius is trying to compete in this tournament too, because even even when I was in that event, I didn't tell anybody about it. Um, myself and Sane were both in it, and we had both gone to the regional event in Chicago, which leads to the next part of my story is, um, I ended up going to that tournament. I believe it was on. Saturday morning? Or what day would free for alls be played on? Friday. Sure. Well they did they did majority free for alls on Friday and then did did they do like pro free for alls yeah, on Saturday? Saturday yeah. Saturday, okay, so Saturday. so that was the thing is Saturday I had um I drove out to that like E V games where I had to play my regional and then I won the car, came back and placed like top eight in free for all. I wanna say I placed like third or fourth in the pro free for all without any warm up. And <laughs> And then we, uh, spoiler alert, we ended up winning that tournament too. That's so sick. But <laughs> So that was definitely one of my highest uh, grossing weekends of my whole gaming career where winning a $43,000 car and then winning, I think, very minimal amount of money in the Halo Free For All and then winning the 4 vs 4. Uh, you owe me a little bit, I couldn't over so hard. <laughs> <laughs> but so how did your event go and who'd you fill, who'd you get to fill in Pac's place? Because I don't think I even know that. So on the way to the tournament, we're probably like four hours out from Chicago at this point, we have no teammate. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been nice to get a heads up with me like that before. <laughs> so we get to the tournament and we have no fourth. Yeah. So luckily, for some reason, Metaku is there. Okay. He also has an invite. Can't take the bracket. 
and I don't know why he's there. He's gonna keep anything. He's again. You found Oops or whatever? Yeah, he was good. He was super good in Halo 1, especially. Yeah. So anyways, he's there without a team. So we're like, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't even know him at this point. I don't know how we ended up getting in contact with him, but we're like, hey, you want to join up? He's like, all right. <laughs> he ends up joining. And so we end up still getting into the championship bracket, but instead of our team that we've been playing with, we're, we are stuck with Netaku. Yeah. And was he well practiced or was he not really ready for the event? Oh, he was out of it for sure. He was out of it for sure. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I think our very first match was on main stage and it was against Neighbor Chibi. I think. <laughs> Detach? Spy, Spy, and I'm not sure their fourth was. I remember Detach team with Neighbor quite a bit early on. Would that be a possibility? That was 2006. Okay, that was 2006. Yeah. I forget who their fourth was, but yeah, we ended up playing them round one, and we beat them like 3-1 or something. I'm like, all right, <laughs> got this. Kotaku was actually like a six sniper, randomly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, at least, you know, he's pretty good. We have a chance. We have a chance to win this thing, but not really. <laughs> so then our next match is against, what do you think? Was it against us? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, great. I believe. Our team, Polar, Michigan, I think might have been called against 3D, and then we just got absolutely crushed. <laughs> Alright, someone just said they were having trouble hearing you, so I turned the volume up now. Hopefully the chat can hear Victory a little bit better. But Hopefully. I'll repeat what I last said, I guess. We got crushed by 3D. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely a quick 3-0. Um, who has... Who had like a sick cross map stick on Ogre 1 or something at a pretty far combo, so that was cool to see, but it was mad it was a massacre. <laughs> so we ended up getting sent to the loser's bracket, and then I think we won one or two more matches, and we ended up getting top 16. Okay. We ended up losing to So Sick, which was like the city and Havoc. Okay, I do remember those names for sure. Yeah, we lost to them for top 12, I think 3 2 or 3 1. So it wasn't too bad for first tournament, top 16. Not no. many people can say that. <laughs> no, I agree. I, I think. It's funny because you hear a lot of these different pros. You talk to certain ones, like people like, oh, strong side, you know, went from, you know, being on Carmen up to the top teams within the season or whatever. And it's like, yeah, he doesn't remember. He doesn't mention that first tournament where he yeah. placed out like top 32 with like him and Elamite and just didn't place well. Like, but they both grinded up and both became national champions, each of them. So, yeah. we happen to have for those that don't know. I guess we'll get into this a little bit later in Halo history, but uh, victory, victory also. <laughs> Was a national champion in 2009, so. 2010. 2010. Shoot. <laughs> Had the year wrong. Yep. So, anyways, uh, that finished out. I think that Chicago event was it was really late. I think it was in December of 2005. So, uh, yep, that was the end of my 2005. Right. I guess it was a little, little bit of a rising year there. Oh yeah, for sure. I think uh, we might have been able to get top top eight possibly had we had two players in the top two because funny funny thing is. Uh, I just like fell asleep during one of the games. What? <laughs> he, just he, literally he, fell asleep? He literally fell asleep, man. I don't know how that's possible. Is this guy serious? It was like a standoff sanctuary game. Did he just not sleep the night before or something? It's very possible. Cause he was what? with, uh, he came there with, uh, what's her, what's her face? That girl, stupid duping. So it's very possible. Okay, so he was busy the night before. Yeah. Um, <laughs> obviously that was the only reason he came. <laughs> oh, okay, now, now I guess that makes more sense. Like, yeah. the fact that if he didn't come there with a team and didn't yeah. really have any exact Halo reason to be there. I don't think he cared too much. <laughs> Which kind of sucked, but yeah. I think he had top 16. I think he could have got better with Hawk, but yeah. we'll never know. <laughs> Alright, so that leads us to 2006 season. Somewhere around there. Now, at this point, some point somewhere around this point, the agency roster formed, correct? Incorrect. Incorrect. No, is that 2007? Yep. Okay, yep. so what was 2006 roster? 2006, I stuck with Slim. And decided Which is to a good choice. Of, Slim is dirty. Pocket another shot at it, although he had the ultimate bail. <laughs> 2005. <laughs> so it ended up being me, Slim, Pock, and Matthew. Okay. Cue the Maxter. What, what was this team name? Was this still something to do with, uh, like, with Director and FBI? Yeah, yeah, yeah. FBI yes. the agency? Or am I FBI still Michigan. still FBI Michigan, okay. Michigan, yep. That was the name of that one. So we came in, <laughs> funny thing is we all rode in an RV from 
like Detroit Metal Lands because that was the first event. That was interesting. <laughs> funny though, cause, you know, as you know, Pac's a pretty funny guy. So. Oh yeah, Pac is hilarious. And didn't you guys have a gaming setup in there too, where you just like LAN or do like split screen ones? Uh, yeah, we had like one TV and an Xbox. We still only use it like occasionally though, because they complain that like wasted ass or something. <laughs> so. <laughs> I thought just use battery, right? Like, yeah, so does I it does it put the otherwise. alternator in the overhaul or something? I don't know enough about cars. Yeah, I'm clear it up. But, I don't uh, know enough about cars to dispute that, but I don't think it's right. <laughs> yeah, I guess I didn't. I mean, I, I wasn't gonna argue with them. <laughs> so yeah, we had one TV and like an Xbox in there, and we, we played a little bit, but probably like one sixteenth of the ride total. <laughs> Luckily, there was like a bed in there, so I think we crammed meat dirt pack in the bed. Wait, what was know. it? What was the bed again? For the Metal games, Lance. Metal Lance, Okay, that's right. So we get to the events, and I uh, think. I don't really remember any of the specific matches or anything, but we ended up placing 10th. 10th, alright. Don't really remember who we lost to or who we beat. But we ended up losing to, I think, uh, like Stoner 2, Elamite, Classic, and somebody else. And, uh, Wait, were Stoner 1 and Stoner 2 twins as well? I don't think so. I think Stoner 1 was older. Okay. So they're fake, fake ones don't and 2s. Don't quote Yeah, definitely <laughs> fakers there. <laughs> so yeah, they got 9th, we got 10th, and uh, you know, it wasn't too bad. I think we lost to So Sick again, probably for top eight, of course. Now, early on, were you able to, like, was the reason that you were able to go to a lot of these tournaments because of director and, like, sort of sponsorship stuff? Or, yeah, would, you, or would you have not been able, would you have been able to make it on your own? Uh, I mean... It's hard to say? Yeah, it is hard to say. I mean, I, I didn't, I had a job, but I don't know if I would have been willing to pay all that money to go to Yeah. You know? But, uh... Yeah, for these early old school six events, yeah, they had our back, so it's definitely gonna go. It's all of my good. Yeah. So we got 10th Metal Lance 2006, and the next event was Balance 2006. I think, uh, how'd you guys do with these two events, by the way? Well, let me think. Metal Lands 06, we had to have won. We had to, I think we won like the first few events, right? Before the Carbon Takeover, yeah? Before the Carbon Takeover, so I think we won like the first three or four in a row, something like that. Like we won three or four in a row, and then we lost three in a row. So. Yeah, I'm guessing that we won both those events. Makes sense. So, yeah, we got 10th of Metal Lands, and then Dallas was the next event. And uh, actually, Dallas, I guess, you remember Livewire and Lansing? Yep. The guy who owned it, Joe, was going to help us out, like, book our flights and whatnot to the event. For what reason? For, uh, like, kind of Livewire promotion? Yeah, or... yeah, Livewire. We got okay. Livewire in our name somewhere, something like that. Gotcha. Which, looking back, it's not a good strategy to events in Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, where his logic was there, but... Yeah. Um, so, like, the week before the event, I'm, like, emailing director here. I'm like, I haven't seen anything. Are, are, are our flights booked or anything? He's like, yeah, yeah, you should be taking care of. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> right, whatever, man. I think the rest of Halo history should be done in director's <laughs> voice from Pit on Cam. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'd be... I, I can try. <laughs> so anyways... <laughs> I didn't end up checking out again for another couple days, and then I emailed them, talked to them on the phone, and... Yeah, yeah, it never feels good when you're like, alright, I haven't seen that itinerary yet, like, I've heard it's coming, but... Yeah. So, you know, he assured me that it was happening, so I'm like, this guy, he's, you know, he's been helping me out, he's been right so far, so I'll trust him here. Yeah. Then, like, a night before the event, I'm like, alright, I don't see anything, what's going on here? <laughs> and then, it turned out that the library guy, like, never booked anything. <laughs> so none of us had flights or anything to the event. And he's talking about like driving out there last minute. I'm like, uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> so unfortunately, we ended up not going to the second event. <laughs> really? Yeah, we didn't go. Whoopsie. Sorry, teammate. Oh, it kind of um, sucked. You know, we just yeah. went and wanted to defend our seed or whatever. That does suck. Um, so it was quite the hindrance to our. I think that was, I think that was one of the things that we had to learn the hard way going up uh, like early on in pro gaming where we were promised so many ridiculous things where it's like oh yeah this person's gonna take care of your flights or like give you sponsorship and send x amount of dollars and so many things never follow through <laughs> where you guys weren't the only ones like i've heard yeah. plenty of other people like oh well we have a sponsor they're gonna take care of our flights and then they find out a day or two before that it, they're not getting their flights booked and it's like uh they try to look at flights and prices are tripled or quadrupled and they can't afford it yeah it's uh definitely didn't really happen to us. <laughs> yeah. Common enough. It was too common, really. Yeah. Kind of sucks. But, uh, yeah, we ended up missing the event. But somehow we still ended up with, like, a 14th seed going into the next event. 
based on your first performance? No, 14th seed. Yeah, we had 14th seed okay. playing the Anaheim. And how did that one go? What was the lineup there again? Same lineup? Same lineup. Yeah, we had the same lineup throughout the whole season. I wasn't all about that shady business. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't think anybody else really wants to team with any of us, so that helped too. <laughs> but anyways, we went with the same lineup. Me, Pac, Macchio, Dirt, and two... Anaheim Duck 6. We are 14th seed. Okay. Which saw our first big matchup against... I guess our first matchup was against like the... Uh, 19th seed or 18th seed or something, but our first big matchup was against three seed at that point, was Carbon. Okay. I believe it went final boss straight Carbon at that point. Okay. So it was a 14th seed against um, a three seed, and somehow we ended up beating them in the series, I think 3-2 or 3-1. <laughs> so that was like the, the biggest upset possibly like in the history of Halo at that yeah. point. I, I mean, I knew we could do it. We were all pretty good. But I don't think anybody else was ever expecting it. No. That's just we haven't been at the last tournament. <laughs> <laughs> so we ended up beating Carbon, and uh, I think later on we ended up choking. That was that match was for top top six or something. I think. Um, I mean that's only a top sixteen match, so it'd be top eight in winners bracket at that top point, eight in right? Bracket. Okay. So, so maybe we, that's we like top. Time. That's that's probably like top twelve guaranteed. Would be my my guess. Okay. So you're already guaranteed higher than your last. Well, your last placing was tenth. You said. Well, correct. actually. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. So, we won that game, and then I think we ended up losing it straight, probably. That makes sense. Or no, no, we lost to the sixth seed, probably. I don't even know who it was. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe we beat the sixth seed after. I don't know. All I know is we ended up getting top six that tournament. Which is a huge step up, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> tenth, from tenth to not attending the tournament to sixth, that was pretty cool progression. And I can't remember how it went back in the day, like, 06, 07. Like, did, did those years... Did we get some sort of stipend if you were top 16? And then did uh, we get... Did it pay 06, out just top 8, I want to say? 06, I think only top... Like, top 4 top eight? stipends. Okay. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. Top, say, top 4 top 8. Definitely not top 16. Gotcha. I think they did start doing that in 08, even. But, uh... Yeah, so... We got 6 there. Which... Was my best placing up until that point, of course. Yeah. And... Then, from then on out, we really didn't do anything special. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you stay with this li lineup for almost the whole season? The whole season, man. It, Dang. That, yep, that gave us some Tupac whole season. Okay, so... So I guess I'm saying Carbon. First off, it seemed like Carbon sometimes had those events where they just, like, lose in what would seem like earlier round or whatever. Like, I don't, I don't remember that being the only time where they lost, like, second or third round. And then they just come back and they would, like, destroy through loser's racket. Doesn't that, doesn't that sound correct? Like... Ah, definitely, man. It happened to me later on in Halo, Halo 3. Yeah, they'd always, like, upset the, pretty much the seeds of the entire event somehow, just yeah. by losing that early round. Yeah, they were, uh... They were pretty inconsistent, especially early <laughs> days. Like, they early... Losers bracket, though. Yeah, they, they made their losers bracket runs. Yeah. But, um, alright, so we're going to 07. This is where agency forms then, or am I incorrect? You are correct, but actually I want to backtrack there one second Ooh. to championships. We did make it to championships under that team. <laughs> Las Vegas Finals 2006. Okay. And uh, where did you guys some, place in 06 Finals? For some reason, finals? only the top three paid out in 2006, which was not cool. No way! Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Was we it literally good. like 160 grand and then what, like 40 or 30 or grand or something? Yeah. yeah. No way. Is that for real? For only real, top dude. three paid? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. So my team ended up getting fifth at, at finals, and we didn't get a penny. <laughs> <laughs> we got scammed there. Yeah, uh, there's, it's we weird because they even they even have some of those issues even to this day. Like, just it seems like bad prize breakdowns, like some just so small oversights or whatever. Obviously, they always want to like tout like this huge, huge first place prize or whatever. But at the same time, there has to be something sustainable for like, top eight or whatever for people yeah, to go to events and national tournament finals at the end of the season. You'd be paying out. Yeah. One, top three. I think it's the regional or the New York playoffs, or whatever. They're paying out the top eight, even. Yeah, that's that's odd. It's crazy. They went they went backwards there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyways, we got fifth there and didn't get didn't get paid. That's so, rough. And come 2007 is when we finally decided to part ways with Slim and Tupac. We had been carrying them long enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were good, but uh, we figured we. Could I also felt like well. Pac was 
great player when he put time into it, but there's also times, like, there's a couple years there where he didn't take it as serious as you want it in a teammate. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, there's a lot of times where, like, Slim and Pac, like, somehow didn't even have internet. <laughs> so we could never play online. I mean, it was nice being able to get together at, like, Macho's house, which we did a lot. Practice. <laughs> Not all on Macho's kind of thing, but still. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I guess being all Michigan. Yeah, that was an advantage there, but, I mean, overall, inconvenience, I'd say. <laughs> so we ended up parting ways with them, and we joined up with Elamite and SK. Elamite and SK, how did you decide on those two, or how did you meet up with those two, like, and get, get in talks of teaming with each other? So, Elamite uh, had been on, like, a top, a consistent top 8 team as well, but he was also struggling to, like, crack on the top four. Yeah, what was his top 8 team back in, like, 06? Um, I don't even know. I think. I think they had, like, a pistol involved there somewhere, like, a triple double oh seven. <laughs> it's triple double oh seven. Zoner 2 was on there, I think, it maybe... Pistol. I don't know. It was a oh, weird Pistol Pete. Yeah, yeah, the New York kid. All right. Yeah. So they got like uh, top top six, top eight. We beat them at every tournament we played them in. So okay. They were right there with us. And then SK was also in that realm, top six. Although I think he was a little bit further behind, like top twelve. Okay. Top twelve. Okay. I don't know what team he was on. Hopefully, someone check him. Drop that knowledge. <laughs> Yeah, if anyone knows what team SK Halo God was on in 06, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Feel Might or SK made it to the the Vegas Championship to that thing. Okay. But anyways, uh, we ended up picking them up because we're like, we thought they were pretty good. You know, we thought they had potential, and if we all put in some time, we could be a top team. You know? Yeah. So we enter the 2007 season under FBI the agency, <laughs> and that is like I said, me, Macchio, Feel Might, and SK. Okay. So first event of 2007 is Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, we had practiced a lot before this event. I think we may have even landed you guys once, maybe twice. Well, I know after a while it got to the point where, I mean, I don't want to just spoil it for the rest of the season, but we got to the point where we didn't land pretty much with you, your team every single time because um, for some reason we like we, we didn't have the best relationship with like straight or in like Carmen didn't want to land obvious for against us for obvious reasons nor did we want to land against them like it was kind of like we were kind of buying for first second in a lot of cases um, and I think straight too like it was probably one of those things where they were, they had you know almost beaten us before or had beaten us sort of thing right and we just kind of we're trying to find our, what's the best team that we can land against that we almost like I don't want to say didn't consider a threat, but what's the best team that we can land against that aren't our direct competitors at the moment? And so we started landing with you guys, I would say almost before every event, right? Uh, or at least about, a decent yeah, amount. I mean, like, I would say if we had seven tournaments that year, or I think we had six, I would say we probably land before four of them. At least had four lands. I'd say that is pretty spot on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... I mean, especially with that early lineup of the agency, we definitely land guys a ton with that lineup. Yeah. So, um, what I gotta say? I don't know. I guess, I know we land you guys before that because you guys, our strong side made a set with us. And if we ended up beating Carbon, like, round, if we ended up beating Carbon, basically, he'd pay each of us, like, 100 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> because the old we were, strong like, side money, man. Because Carbon had just beat guys the championship you know I guess you guys were still a little afraid of them <laughs> obviously yeah I mean they beat us in oh yeah. six championships I, I know we grinded hard in the offseason then also bringing in strong side who had been dropped by them so strong side obviously had a lot to prove like all right they dropped me and then they won the next two tournaments obviously they made a good choice um so um <laughs> that's funny though because I remember side always just run up just whatever ridiculous bets like like you know, you, you throw this piece of paper into the trash can from 20 feet away and I'll give you a hundred bucks or whatever. Like, yeah, he, was just... he was rolling deep with some guilt money. <laughs> Good money to blow. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I guess in one of the lands, he, he offered he offered that up. <laughs> so, like, oh, I mean, I mean, why wouldn't we take it? Yeah, you have nothing <laughs> to lose. They, they were in our bracket because the seeds, we had the seeds available beforehand because it's basically just, you know, off of last season. Yeah. Placing their final, final point tallies, I guess. So I think we were probably, I don't know if we were 8th seed or whatever, but they were 1st seed, and we ended up playing them in the winner's bracket. 
at Charlotte, probably round three, round three or four. Okay. And, and how'd that match go? We end up beating them. So this three. was probably, like you said, winners, like what, what, round three or something like that, basically where you go to top four in winner's record, is that correct? For beating them? Uh, no, no, no. Top three. Dang. Okay. It's, Wait. it's either top six or top three. Top four is something. No, I meant you would have been in top four in winner's bracket then. Like, oh, there's only four yeah, teams left so. in winner's yeah, yeah, bracket? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so in that case, I think it'd be like top six overall. Like, guaranteed in tournament for beating them oh, at yeah, that point. Oh, yeah, that makes sense now, because we, uh, we were definitely fourth and fifth seed, so yeah, okay. it was a 1v4. Gotcha. Wait, so, if, it was, if it was a 1v4, that means if you beat them, you're going into winner's finals. Correct. Okay, dang. So that guaranteed you top three in the tournament then? Yep, I think so. Okay. So that's a hell of a way to start off the this tournament year. <laughs> Good start to the seventh season, right? Yes. <laughs> Maybe I'm, I could be totally wrong on that, but I think that's what it Okay. But either way, you ended up upsetting Carbon, the 2006 national champions. We had yep. just land, and I could be incorrect, but I'm pretty sure, at least on the early lands, we we were stomping you guys pretty good. Like, I think we were really strong early on, at least. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, we were a new team. You guys had just obviously improved your roster. Yeah, and we've been practicing a ton the off season, and we were ready. Like, you know, we were landing way more than Carbon. We were practicing online way more than Carbon, and we had a roster that was willing to practice a ton. So. Yeah, you guys are putting in a ton of hours of strong side, and uh, you guys are, you know, old dirty veterans, of course. And we're just, <laughs> we're pretty much new to the scene, just like struggling to get top six. So. <laughs> We had a big ragtag team against a bunch of seasoned vets <laughs> in the land, so of course we got crushed. We got 11 0 a few times for sure. <laughs> Pretty standard back then. But, anyways, we go into the tournament and we end up beating Carbon. It was either 3 0 or 3 1. It's pretty handily. Pretty yeah. handily beat there. And, uh, yeah, so we all go up the strong side. We're like, all right, man, pay up. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you say? You guys were all staying at us, watching, cheering us on. It was cool. Of course we were. I mean, like, at that point, I think that happens a lot of times when you start landing with a team, like, Obviously, yeah, you become really good friends outside the game, that sort of stuff, because not only are you just you're playing against each other, like, you have to spend, you know, three or four days around each other. Like, you're not going to invite people over that you hate. You yeah. want to invite people that are fun, like, you know, they're, they're good players that you can practice against and people that you can hang out with outside the game. And so, you guys were obviously the perfect crew, like, obviously one of the top teams just proved it there by beating Carbon. Um, and then also the fact that, you know, we could, like, hang out afterwards, play, like, Mario Party or just, like, talk and whatever so um but did all right so we we beat you in winners finals then i assume and then i don't remember did did carbon end up beating you in losers finals in that event or did you play second that's in that event? It, huh? what <laughs> it was uh pretty tragic actually <laughs> so uh we ended up going up five to one in the series five to one man oh my god that that, that, that happened five to one Five to one, and you guys. That sink in, dude. We were up five to one in the <laughs> series against Carbon for top two at the first tournament. Of the seven. Five to one. And then uh, we like lost the first game. We're like, all right, whatever, you know. We still <laughs> whatever. Four. It's not like we're gonna lose five in a row. We still have four more games to win. I guess we didn't really ever shake off like shake off losses. We're all just like, all right, man. We can, you know, whatever. We didn't. I don't know. Ends up where we end up in game ten. <laughs> Of course, there's two slayers at the end. I think game 10 is a player thing. We ended up losing that. It was a close one. We ended up losing. And then game 11 is midship slayer, dude. Oh my god. Is that a good or bad game type for you guys? Uh, I mean, it was it was a good game type for us. I mean, I, I, think, I think anyone who played Halo 2 and was good at it had to be good at midship slayer. I mean, that's like a staple game type. It's I remember at the LAN at that event, we had a few epic comebacks against you guys at midship. Yes. So we were pretty confident. <laughs> Like, we had, like, a 49... But, but how confident actually were you? Because it just sounded like you lost four games in a row prior to this. Yeah, we weren't <laughs> confident at all. <laughs> it's, it's like, you, you, you really hope it doesn't happen. But yeah, yeah, like, everyone... No all right, it's, gonna it's the worst, because everyone goes in the tournament scene, and, like, if you go to... If you went to some sort of listening, everyone's like, yeah, dude, we got this. They're, they're not coming back. But everyone's thinking, like, oh, God, how are we going to come back from this? We just lost four in a row. We're fucked. We're fucked. Dude. They have oh my God. I, I try to put the false front every time. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, you just gotta like act confident. Like, oh, dude, we got this. There's no way we're losing. And even at tournaments these days, when it's like our shittiest game, I'm like, we got this, man. <laughs> Back my mind, I know it's our worst game. <laughs> you want to kind of give your teammates confidence. Yeah, yeah. You at least have to say. You, you... 
yeah. at least gives you a small chance to win because otherwise it's like, right. guys, we're screwed. We, there's no, no way we got this. That's your worst that's game like, type. Yeah. <laughs> that's like a game. <laughs> so anyway, it's a smidge hit player, and, uh, you know, the score's pretty even throughout the whole game, and probably around, like, 36 to 36. I have sword launch on, I think, Gandhi. I think it's, like, a triple kill. Ooh. It misses, dude. <sighs> Those were game changers. Classic Halo 2 sword launch miss. Did and you and did you just go like sailing past them? Yes. Like you like. Yes, I did. <laughs> and it was like it was it was on the pink street, which is pretty crucial because they had that pretty well guarded, you know. Yeah. So right when I missed. So you that, go flying out way out into the open, get finished off, and instantly melt that. It's full shield. I instantly melt. That. <laughs> and then they get sword, and they have sword control for the rest of the game, and it ends up being like 48, 47 them. Ooh. And then we're all spawning, and Macchio spawned like red one or blue one behind them, or just kind of like exactly a flank sure on tank. Where they were on the map, they had pink control at this point. They had pink control, so you had like maybe two angles on it. Yeah. So he spawns down there, and he says he heard a one hit call out. Who so charges from like blue one all all the way to bottom middle to like shotgun spawn to Ooh. pink one, kill the one hit guy that he claims was there, <laughs> and ends up getting like quadruple team, and like two of us end up dying at once, and we end up losing like, 50 48. Oh no. If you ask anybody on that team, they'll they'll know that Mackie had like the worst play of all time. <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching, dude, sorry, but you know it's true. <laughs> so we end up losing that. So I like how you say like that was the choke of the tournament, but not your not your sword lunge. Ooh. The sword lunge. It's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stick to that until I die. <laughs> but, uh, Do you yeah, still, I mean, does that still haunt you? The, the sword lunge? It's not not very well known because it wasn't on stream or anything. Some Ooh. people don't know about it. Yeah, that's that's the best though. When something bad like that happens, it's not on stream. No, well, now you're acting like it was my fault. Uh, it's it's not. It's a bad sword lunge, man. <laughs> I mean, you could have maybe aimed it better and connected with that and saved the tournament, but should have taken another second to line it up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was just one of those unfortunate things. <laughs> so yeah, we end up losing fucking six to five. In the series, when we're at five to one, and it's probably I think it's more notable though that the fact that's like, all right, there's there's a couple things that went wrong in that Mitch and Super Slayer game, but five games prior to that, no one will ever know what happened in a single one of those games that you lost. Right. And it'll always come down to that midship team Slayer. Sure. <laughs> and it'll always be known as the worst at Halo choke. <laughs> I think. That, all right, so I, I would agree that that's probably that's that has to be the worst series choke of all time. Five to one. Time. I haven't heard of anything. I, yeah, I've never heard five of five someone two, being up five zero. If someone could tell me there's a 5-0, that'd be awesome, but not it that I know of. a 5 -0. no way. By the way, I have some, uh, someone from the Twitch chat gave us some... Um, now it's at 2006, SK was on Triggers Down, or TD, with Neighbor, Detach, and Toxin. Oh, yeah. Got 5th right. and 12th as they went as... Oh, and, yeah, they beat us for And they banana. also said it was Toxic... Wait, Toxin, Mimic, SK, and Neighbor was a different lineup, I guess, of it. Yeah, they beat us with that, uh, Detach, Neighbor... Detached neighbor lineup at Anaheim when we got six, they got fifth. I was like, damn it, dude. But yeah, so 2007, first time we have to get the third. Uh, of course, you guys won, and Carmen got second, right? Um, at which event was this then? Charlotte. For Charlotte, time. yes, we won the very first one for sure. Yeah. Yep. And then, uh, you know, that season. The next tournament, we end up at Atlanta. We end up getting fourth. We weren't too happy. No, not after not after you've known your potential. You're like, all right, you know, we've taken games off FB, obviously in lands. You've beaten Carbon in tournament. Had the worst choke of all of MLG history, or all of competitive gaming history, <laughs> at the event in order to lose that. No, so no one's ever gonna take that title from me. One <laughs> <laughs> I'll always have, luckily. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, we were kind of pissed after that, but we're like, you know. A couple things would have gone different. We could have easily, maybe even won the tournament, you know? Yeah. So we kept the same squad and uh, went into Meadowlands at 7. Uh, no, this would have been. Wait, yeah, maybe it was. Sorry. I keep getting the order mixed up of the tournaments. I remember 2007, like you said, was yeah, it was Charlotte a weird first. Order for 2007. Yeah, that. It was Charlotte, Meadowlands, and then Dallas, maybe I want to say? I want to say Dallas was. Third or Actually, fifth? I have it right here. Let me look. You have it right there? I do. <laughs> 2007, it went Charlotte, Meadowlands, Dallas, yeah. Wow. Okay. So, Meadowlands, we ended up going in. We got fourth. Uh, 
I think we had a blues in like perfect storm or something stupid for like top three. <laughs> Randy, like legit, aided and random. Pissed me off. <laughs> I thought we were a lot better than them. But uh, after that event, Macchio and I decided that, you know, maybe we can make a change. We got Time third, for a change? And now we're, you know, falling, off, falling down a little bit to fourth. Yeah. So it's a, it's a good chance to make a move if you're going to make one at all. Yeah. So we end up running games with Aiden and Legit because they had just beat us at the tournament. Yeah. And we knew that they were the best, two best in their team. Mm hmm. So we end up running games with them. We're like killing everybody, man. We played Carbon. We like destroyed them online. And uh, so we just like, F it, dude, let's make it official. Yeah. Going with Aiden and Legit. So we end up doing that. Call up El Knight and SK. They're the best, <laughs> of course. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so we're, the team is now me, Mac, Joe, and Dave, legit. It's a pretty sick team on paper, 2006, right? Yeah. 37, I mean, 37. Absolutely. It's half the team that just plays third, half the team that just plays, plays fourth, so we're pretty excited. And the way you look at it is you're, like, looking at, hey, we take, you know, what you consider the two best players from each team. So right. you're beating teams online as bad as we just got beat that last game, is what you're trying to tell me? Like, you're beating Carbon precisely, online. Man, precisely. Like, we just got staked right there, I just realized. Yeah, that was messed up, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Pokemon Master Kyle, man, he's lighting it up. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, so uh, we took a better half of the team that beat us than what we thought was the better half of our team, and we combined with them, so okay. seemed like a good move all around. We had a joke that it, it was called Perfect Agency, you know? <laughs> it was a perfect storm and agency, but anyways, Macchio all of a sudden has like a, a relapse or something crazy, and he starts talking about wanting to bring SK back instead of Legit, and Legit, at this point, is like one of the best players in the game. He, yeah. I think he won the free throw in Charlotte. Okay. And he just placed third at Meadowlands with who I thought were two not top four players. But anyways, that happens. And he ends up coming to my house at like six in the morning in the summer and banging on my mom's window. <laughs> what? This is back when I'm in, or I think I'm back, back, uh, yeah, back, uh, no, I'm still in high school at this point. Did you have a cell phone? I, I think I did, but it's probably on silent or off. <laughs> or maybe he I don't think he had one. It was weird. I don't even know how he knew where my house was. He'd been there once ever, like, two years prior. <laughs> Let alone knows where your bedroom window's at. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was sleeping. I, I was living in the basement because I think my, my room got given away or something. It was 2007. So, yeah, it was the summer before I went to college. So it was my high school senior summer. Okay. So anyways, I was still at home. And uh, so he comes to my house at, like, 6 in the morning. He's banging on windows. Wakes up my mom, my mom's like freaked out. She's like, what's going on? Why is this maniac banging on my window? And it turns out it's Macchio at my house. And he comes over to tell me that we have decided to drop, drop legit for SK. And pick SK back up. And oh, I'm like, how'd you feel about that? I'm like, are you kidding me? Is this real? He's like, dude, like, dude, trust me. Trust me, dude. I'm like, oh no, dude, are you sure? And I don't know. I for some reason I went with it, and uh, <laughs> he ended up sitting at the computer in my living room and typing out, typing out a, a like a private message on the MLG forums. Who's he sending it to? Legit or something? To legit. To, yeah, to legit's like private mailbox on his MLG forum username. Oh my god, it's crazy. Dude. I was like, I had gone to sleep probably like four in the night before. I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> and. I came out of nowhere, so I'm still trying to figure out what the hell is going on. And he's typing out this message, and he doesn't even call or text or do anything. He, he lets. So this is what happens. His, well, just mom ends up finding the message. What? But she she was on his account, like reading the forums or something, I guess, because she used to do that. <laughs> so she gets a message, and she reads it, and she like goes to wake up Brian. Help. <laughs> and that was the beginning of the end, right there. Yeah. Oh my gosh, so we end up picking back up SK. Legit's just really pissed. So Legit and Elmite are now free agents, right? Because yeah. um, we had dropped, we had originally dropped SK and Elmite, but now Legit is back on the market and SK is on our team again. So Legit and Elmite are free agents, and they go and team up on Straight Rippin. And the new Straight Rippin team that ends up forming is uh, T Squared, Legit, Elmite, and Neighbor. Yep. And uh, as we all came to know, this is quite the squad. Reckon <laughs> they were—they're uh, actually pretty solid. Yeah. So the next event was 
um, Chicago. And I think that straight ripping team ended up getting like second or first. First or second. I'm trying to think. So, wait, it, it was Chicago you said? Yeah, I think they got second. Or did you say, alright, so the event order was Charlotte, then Dallas, you said, correct? Charlotte, da Charlotte Dallas, Metal, and Chicago. Okay, I'm pretty sure we lost Dallas. So, I thought that, alright, so we lost Dallas to Carbon. We definitely won, let me think. I know we won four of the six events. Okay, I know that you guys didn't win Orlando. Straight didn't win Orlando, so that's the one straight one. Yeah. So you guys, I think you guys probably won Chicago. Straight got second and we got third. Okay. Yeah. So agency got third there, Straight got second and final boss won. So the team of two players that we just, of two players that we had just dropped ended up getting us at Chicago in front of all my family and friends. <laughs> and we got third place again, dude. I I've gotten third, fourth, third, third. Now. You were sick of it. A stupid, dumb season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And now I'm just pissed off because Legit was like owning that tournament and we should have had him on our team. Yeah. So. So on the last Halo history that I had Roy on, he, uh, he brought up some of the questionable like team changes that <laughs> Macchio seemed to have brought upon too. Like yeah. saying, I forget, I forget the one. So Macchio's really nice guy, good player, but definitely had some questionable team changes when uh, came to selecting players and how we're going about it. He always chose friendship over over anything else, I guess. Which, I mean, I don't know. It could have worked, <laughs> but it just didn't back then. Yeah. For him, for whatever reason. But yeah, he was definitely questionable. I started thinking about it recently, and maybe I should have Yeah, because I think that was the snipe down one. That's what Roy was telling me. He was saying yeah. they took second in a tournament for the first time with you guys. With you, you were part of that one as well. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. all these ones that I'm just talking about, like, oh yeah, Roy kind of <laughs> got in trouble from it. it. It's like, yeah, uh, you got in trouble with that one too. Yeah. <laughs> So anyways, uh, going, ooh, Flair, I have to play this guy. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yep, we lost the straight, you guys got first, and pretty much the rest of the season, we never got better than third. Okay. And Nationals, we ended up placing fourth, actually. Was it that roster the rest of the tournament, the rest of the season, though? For... It was. Okay. It was actually brief talks. Everybody wanted to do this but me. Surprise, Roy didn't mention this in his episode uh, last week, whenever that was. <laughs> um, Macchio and SK wanted to drop Nated for Roy. Ooh. And Roy, I believe, was willing to do it. Ooh, we're going to have to ask Lunchbox about this one on the following Halo history. I think, <laughs> yeah, ask Lunchbox, because I think he had Lunchbox to support to do it, because what? obviously we were better than 5K, we have been placing better than them all season, and beating them all season. So Lunch was like, if you had the opportunity, man, go ahead and do it, you know? Really? That's surprising to me. Pretty sure about that. At least that's what I was told. <laughs> I didn't really get in the mix there, because I wanted to keep Nated. Because <laughs> Nated was like one of the sickest Halo 2 players, you know? Yeah. He, and, was, uh, he was ridiculous. So I think, I guess, I guess it was my fault, because I said, I'm not doing it. I want to keep Nated. Well, alright, to be honest, a lot of people could be like, oh, like, well, how can you not pick up Roy? I think, uh, I think Roy, like Halo 2 Roy, like Halo 5K Roy, Roy is a lot different player. than this, uh, the Roy you've seen in the recent years. Like, the Halo 3 Roy is at least two times better than Halo 2 Roy. Definitely. You can't really compare it. Basically, me and Roy flipped places in Halo 2 to Halo 3. That's basically what happened. Like, I was really good at Halo 2, then Roy was really good at Halo 3. <laughs> yeah, Roy really, I mean, people said he was a lot better, or he was the best on his team, but he wasn't, he was definitely not the force to be reckoned with that he was in Halo 3. No, definitely was not. Beach. So that's why I opted to stick with Nated there, because Nated, I think, to me, was one of the best individually skilled in Halo 2. Yeah, he was he was sick. And everybody's seen his main stage clips, I mean, six plays back then. <laughs> yeah. Yep, so we ended up sticking with that roster, ended up finishing up the season, like, third at the second to last tournament, and then fourth at, uh, at finals. Obviously finishing behind Carbon, okay. uh, Boston straight. And then All you guys right. end up winning, obviously. 2007 finals. I think you guys dropped like one game or no games, or something crazy. Yeah, no, no games. The 07 finals. So. Yeah, if you 3 0 us, I don't know how that happened, but <laughs> thought we were pretty good. <laughs> all right, so let's see. That covers all of your beginning up till end of 07. So how uh, how quickly you want to go through Halo 3? 
Halo 3, uh, we go through pretty quick, I guess. You already covered a, a, the beginning of my Halo 3 with uh, Roy the other day, so. Yeah. And listening, I started off the season with so yeah, let's let's uh let's let's call it the elephant in the room. We talked about this last time how when it came down to there's this team switch. For those that don't know, we're talking about you can watch Halo History episode two with Roy. <laughs> Long story short, is I get booted off a of final boss, and Roy and Lunchbox uh, contacted me. They say, hey, we you know we just placed I think second or third the last tournament, something along those lines. Um, it was what you. Lunch, Roy, and Snipe Down? Yeah. I never team with Snipe Down, though. So. Ne you never team with Snipe Down? It was me, Lunch, Roy, and Macchio. And Macchio, and what'd you guys they just, they had just dropped Snipe Down for me. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, that's what happened. So basically, the tournament before, it was, like he, he just said the lineup, they placed second at the tournament, I believe behind Straight Ripping or something. Um, yep. And they asked me if I want to join... They had it down at this point to, like, Macchio had gotten some sort of offer from FB or was, like, practicing with them, and it's a weird situation. Like, you got picked up, then dropped, and wait, that wait, sort wait, of just thing. Wait, just clarify, this is after I had rejoined Instinct, and it was me, Macchio, we got third. Me, Macchio, right much. Okay. Knife okay. down was on, trigger down, they won. Okay. Oh, yeah. Or it was, he was on straight. Actually. Okay. Either way, the, the lineup at the moment was, it was victory... Roy and Lunchbox, and they were looking for a fourth. Yeah. And so, I had gotten a call from Roy and Lunch, and honestly, this time, it was kind of weird. Like, I had explained this in the previous one, saying, like, I was like, I don't know if I want to team with them. Like, we were kind of always, like, I, we'd always land against you, or we land against, like, 5K, and I always felt like we were, like, our teams were a step above. Obviously, Halo 3 is a new game. I came to understand that. Um, and I... But before that tournament, I had been playing with Soviet a lot, and just, like, in the meantime, through, like, the random matchmaking, or even just realizing how good he was in the one versus one, because I believe he won 2007 nationals for individual for the one versus one. Um, yeah, yeah, pretty sure he took first in that. And obviously, that's always a pretty telling sign when someone can like place like I didn't realize the plasma just bounced so far off bubble shield. Regardless, um, that's usually a telling sign someone can place that well, like individual skill wise. That means they they have the talent needed to place at the top. He was a good, good guy, and I, was, you know, after I got off foul bossing, I, I, pretty much knew I'd have a lot of great options. It, I could pretty much have probably asked any team and gotten joined on just based off of like my past history from foul boss and how well I placed in the past. And I wanted to give one tournament go with Soviet because I just saw a lot of potential and wanted to see what he was capable of and see if he was someone that I could team with and, you know, try to build a new top unbeatable squad. So I already gave my word. I was like, all right, I'll team with this for this next tournament, guaranteed. And when they contacted me, it was Lunch Roy and Victory. I was like, you know, I first off I was hesitant to make that team, which now obviously I should be kicking myself for even hesitating for a second to not join with the uh, <laughs> likes of those guys. But beyond that, um, <laughs> sorry, I was focusing on my Mauler kill. But uh, beyond that, I had already told Soviet, so I was like, guess what? I'm already team of Soviet for sure this next tournament. If you have room for both of us, I'm in. Otherwise, uh, no, so... Alright, alright, hold on, back that ass up first of all. Back that ass up! Back that ass up! <laughs> so you mentioned before, I heard this during the Roy... The Roy, uh... Halo history. Yeah. That you said I was the one that notified you about... That is true! You did, so... <laughs> that was a, uh... Good friend move there, too, by the way. Cause you had... I believe you were the first one that contacted me asking as far as a teaming thing. Because I remember I was, uh, I got done with the Lando tournament, just sitting, like, poolside, just wanted to relax for, you know, three or four days. I had just gotten, basically, like, hotel for a few days, me and my, my girlfriend, we just went to, like, the parks and stuff like that. And as I'm getting, like, all these texts, people are like, hey, like, what are you thinking of doing team-wise and stuff? I'm just like, uh, I remember you were one of the first ones to text me. I was like, I was like, dude, I'm already in Fall Boss. Like, what are you talking about? He's like, you're like, might want to check your back or something like that. You said, I was like, all right, well... Victory must know more than I do because obviously uh, this is news to me. And so, how I found out about it basically was that they had asked Macchio, right? Yeah. So that's where that came from. That okay, so you found out through Macchio and then got gotcha. boss. I'm like, well, of course he's gonna say yes to that. Too bad for like a Macchio wall swap, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I tried to get a hold of you, and then yeah, you weren't you weren't aware at this point. So I'm like, oh shit, man, I like, ruined his vacation. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I felt bad about that, but I asked, I, I asked you, uh, all right, well, lunch, lunch with Roy and I, we're looking for a fourth. Is that something you know you might be interested in? And then, and then you hit me with the dagger. Oh yeah. yeah it was, it was to this day, it still hurts, man. I apologize. I. But I'll get when I got packaged. If it makes you feel any better, I, I had gotten an offer from Straight Grip and the team that, what, I think they took second right before that, or first of the event before, Yeah. and I would have had him place in Snipe Down, and it was the same situation. I told T-Squared, he had called, he's like, I know we've had our differences in the past, he's like, I think you're a sick player, and we could team up, we could be that next dynasty, because I think, I think that's always what people are thinking, as soon as, like, one dynasty crumbles, or, I think, I think, to be honest, I think Final Boss is only, like, true, like, unbeatable dynasty sort of thing where we just had like unbeatable streets for you know stretch for x amount of years of course you had these different periods where like triggers down where they were like ridiculously unbeatable for like four events and same with you know different instinct roster and eventually your final boss roster those again but uh in the end i think that's everyone was thinking like after seeing what was possible like through the halo 2 final boss sort of thing like oh we want to recreate that have that unbeatable squad um and so when squared called me you know, said, like, I'd love to play aside our differences, like, team up, you know, I think you're a sick player, and I, you know, I agree, I was like, dude, you guys had a great run last event, like, I could see it working out well, and I said, like, the only problem is I've told Soviet that I'm teaming with this next event, um, so unless you have space for both of us, or I even, I even brought up, I was like, you know, possibly I could do something after this event, um, assuming we don't, you know, place, like, top two or top three, um, but he was like, you know, it's, it's hard. You can't tell someone, like, oh, just pick up a temporary fourth and then wait for me to finish this ex extra tournament. And, <laughs> and if, if we do bad, I'll come join you. So uh, I don't remember. I think they ended up picking up Snipe Down then at that point, right? They did, yep. Okay. They were left for Final Boss and they replaced him with Snipe Down. <laughs> so anyways, basically Walsh hit me with the package deal there and I <laughs> remember it as being package deal on. Ouch. It was, real, it was rough, man. I, did, I ended up joining Classic. And, uh, we ended up placing in top four, and then I think sixth at, sixth at Nationals or something. Okay. It wasn't awful, but, you know, it's just... Not what you wanted to be at. Not at all, because I just placed third every tournament before that, you know? Yeah. I wanted to prove, not digress, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Deep root. <laughs> I figured that, you know, I think, to this day, I think that if it would have been me, you... Or, yeah, me, you, Wrench, Lunch, and Roy, we possibly could have won. I know you guys got second, but... Yeah, I mean, we got second in multiple tournaments. We, we took second at that first event. Uh, I don't remember what... It had to have been Toronto, never mind. Yeah, Toronto for sure. Um, and then... I'm trying to think what event was after that. But either way, we took... I believe it was, like, second... Shoot, I wish I knew our placings that season. I, I know for sure... I know for sure we got second at the Nationals second. in 08. And then second at that first event afterwards, so... Okay. I don't remember any other... I don't remember how many events we had with that roster, though. Three, uh, I believe. Three events, so... Yeah. Can anyone tell me our placing? I can't remember what it was. Because um, I know two... Two out of three events, we beat Final Boss. Obviously, like, Toronto... Got, like, second, third, second, or second, fourth, second, I'm guessing? That like, would be my guess. Like, second, yeah. third, second, or I don't know. It was always pretty respectable placings. Like, nothing... Not first, like we would obviously love, but still, it was like not bad placing. Um, um, actually, I think it was Dallas after that, and maybe we took like third or fourth. I remember being very disappointed with like how we played. Um, we just had like the stupid style. We just like sat behind the whole time, like <laughs> tried. Style. Yeah, it was so bad. We just <laughs> you gotta be aggressive in Halo Three in a lot of cases. Um. And I just remember, like, we like had the setup on, like, Guardian Team Slayer, <laughs> which is truly my fault. Like, I'm trying to facilitate, like, we gotta get one person here, like, this is a perfect unbeatable setup. And it's just, like, every single time someone would slip by or someone would die, and our whole setup would just go to shit. Like, we would just all, like, panic trying to hold the setup and just everyone get flanked on their own. Instead of just, yeah. instead of just letting, like, Roy, like, run free and Soviet run free and just out PR everyone during those chaotic times, like, hold your positions! <laughs> and it was so bad. Um... <laughs> So yeah, I remember that being huge, huge disappointment of a tournament for us there. But it still wasn't like insanely bad placings. Like it, it was, I want to say like somewhere between third and fifth place we took. But yeah, you guys definitely didn't drop out of the top six. Yeah. That's 100% true. <laughs>
But yeah, anyways, you know, maybe we could have taken first. Yeah. We'll never thanks, know. Thanks for the package, bro. It's a real good package. Ah, uh, dude. I, hey, I, I didn't have to place him first that season, and the team that did offer me a spot ended up placing first in the finals that season. So, obviously, yeah, I made I was, some mistakes. Here's how I saw it. I just finished third every event so far this season. You picked up Soviet, who I don't even think was in, like the top six. No, he was like his team like just placed eighth or something like that, like chilled reality. But when I was watching that match, he was just wrecking so hard too. Unbelievable. So of course, of course my mind just fell together. <laughs> I just remember the phone call from Lunch and Roy where they told him, like, God damn it, dude. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> dude, yeah, Halo team changes, never, never fun. Some milky stuff goes on. I always yeah. felt like I at least handled it up front. I would always at least explain, like, reasoning why I'm doing something. Like, I was never, like, she like, yeah, yeah, dude, dude, you're totally on the team. And then, like, have, like, Lunch and Roy, like, tell you. Or something. Yeah. I just don't want it. it it's over. I'm done with it. So I'm done with it. We'll, we'll, we'll move past it. That's it. 2008. <laughs> That's it for 2008. The second half of 2008 was no good. <laughs> no, let's do it. Alright, so after 08, let's see. What what did you finish up like 08, 09? Or do we skip that time and we go to the glory times 010? Or not 010, just 2010. Quick review of 2009. Quick review of 2009? That was a shitty season, you said? So we don't spend much time on it. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Yeah, let's skim, let's skim 2009. Quick rundown through 09. That is when I first joined Final Box. And what was the roster? Ogre 2, Fear Itself, and Makio. Because for some reason, I had allowed Makio to, to join Classic at the end of the season in 2008. <laughs> we had gotten like fourth, and then I let Makio join, and we dropped like six. He's had like some magic with the classic roster. Like I think I think I remember seeing that like early on Halo Three with classic roster. Like I remember it being something like Legend Pimp, Soldier, yeah, um, Ant. Yeah, and it's just one of those things that I was just thinking. I was like, wow, how did uh like on paper previous tournaments this team is not gonna place like top two, whereas obviously right out the gates they obviously played together just. They had good teamwork, they just seemed to work together very well, like, how, whatever way they played, just work together. Call right. people off guard. So... I mean, it wasn't the worst option to have to join for the last three tournaments, but, you know, it's just like... But after getting, like, top three and seeing, like, potential where you could add a roster where, it's, like, like you said, we could have taken first, even. Yeah. You know, it wasn't my ideal team at all, yeah. but... It wasn't the worst, so I can't complain too bad. Yeah. So, 2009 ends up, uh, I guess, final boss kind of split up, so Ogre 2 was going its own separate way. Because Ogre 1, of course, had decided to move to Australia. Well, that was end of 2008. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. Fast forward to, forward to the start of the season 2009 here. Yep. So Ogre 2 was kind of stranded on his own without Ogre 1. So I asked him to team in here itself, and I guess we ended up coming to an agreement there. Yeah. So we formed the team of myself, Macchio, yourself in Ogre 2, and we ended up getting fifth at the first event, which wasn't great, but it wasn't awful. Yeah. And then, up the next event, uh, it was like Columbus, Des 9, we ended up getting third. And then for some reason, I guess Spear Self didn't like Macchio very much. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, dude, we gotta boot him. <laughs> And then we decided to pick up Strong Side because I guess Strong Side was on status quo, but he had had enough with that team. Yeah. So we decided to jo rejoin Final Boss, of course. You know what a story? <laughs> Strong Side back to Final Boss. <laughs> and then we basically never got top three again. We ended up the season finishing like fifth. Okay. And then we placed outside of the top eight one of the events, and then we got eighth in the finals. Dang. Wait, you get that roster placed outside of top eight? We and... got ninth, man. Jeez. Yeah, it was a uh, tragic game five against Heaven and Earth. Amplified Team Slayer. <laughs> it was like 48 to 46, but the map was so bad that <laughs> the ammo doesn't respawn. <laughs> once you pick it up on that map, it doesn't respawn. So wait, I so you got you got you stayed alive long enough to have a run out of clip? Yeah, man, this is a standoff for like the last two kills of the game. <laughs> actually, we fear itself. Actually, this is fear itself left before this event, and we picked up Soviet. So it was me, strong side Soviet Ogre two at this event second last event of the season, and we ended up getting ninth because it was a game five against Heaven and Earth for top six, or top eight, and on Amplified, 
the ammo doesn't respawn throughout the whole game. <laughs> it's a dumb forge map. And uh, the only ammo you can pick up is from like, people who have already died. Previous lives forever. Yeah. So the score is 48 46. And like three of us are out of ammo. I think Soviet doesn't have any ammo, so he decides he's going to go into like a melee or something dumb. <laughs> <laughs> he ends up dying, so it's like 49 46. And we all still have ammo, and they charge us. And we end up losing. <laughs> so we got three two lost out on top eight. This is really embarrassing. <laughs> and then at that point, we're just like, dude, Soviet's got to go. <laughs> and you know, for the last two tournaments of every season, the roster's locked, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we couldn't pick anybody, any other pros up because the rosters were locked. So you're and stuck with that roster. We, we were stuck with the roster, but we were able to drop Soviet because he, he randomly disappeared for like weeks at a time. Maybe. Like before the second last event, and then even more so before the last. Just like event. wouldn't be online, wouldn't be able to get a hold of him. That sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, he claimed he was doing a lot of work with like his family, and like he didn't have a phone or I'm quite to borrow it all the time, so we could never get a hold of him. And when we did, he would never really talk to us or anything. So it's like, all right, dude. So we'd had enough of that. So we ended up <laughs> picking up an amateur player for the final tournament. Jeez. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Who was the AM that you were able to pick up? Cipher. Cipher. Okay. Remember Cipher? Yep. He wasn't awful. Uh, Pat Hines, I think it was by now, Cypher. Yeah. So, uh, we, we he definitely went got a lot better when it came to, like, uh, was it, like, towards the end of Halo 3 and in Reach? He yeah. was pretty sick? Yeah, yeah. He was definitely sick in Halo 3. He just never gone to any tournament. Yeah. He's, he's just a young kid, I guess. But, uh, we ended up playing for our team. Actually, he had a pretty, a couple pretty sick plays on the main, on the main stage. They had him on, uh, the main screen for everybody to watch. And, yeah. You know, like, killing Frenzy or something, but... He played well, but we ended up falling short. I think we lost to ETH round one. Obviously, they ended up winning the tournament. We lost to them game five. <laughs> and then, uh, I forgot we lost the losers bracket, but we ended up getting hit. So that sucked. Okay. So 2009, not my best season by any, by any standard. <laughs> like to, uh, put an aspect in that one. Alright, well, alright, let's move on to better things then. Let's talk about the 2010 season. Ooh, 2010, alright, let's talk about Check. it. <laughs> so, 2010. <laughs> Fear itself had just had a bad stint on Instinct. He was in like a crisis where he was sitting a mile away from the DB. <laughs> uh, a lot of weird stuff. I don't know. I think they got, they really underperformed in the finals. They were like a favorite to win, but they didn't. So they, I guess there's a mutual split between him and Lunch and Roy. But anyways, Fear itself decided to join back up with Tuger and I. And uh, we were looking for a fourth. And it just so happened that Tots had left the status quo roster, which had been like enable flame sword ace and tots. Yeah. So, you know, we figured, hey, why not, you know, if we could get some land practice in at, at his house, you know? Yeah. His dad was gonna help out pay for like our hotel or whatever. Yeah. So we were like, they always okay. had the sick land set up yeah. and obviously so, uh, Tots is, Tots had the land network set up. Yeah. That everybody came to know and love. Tots was a good player, I think a lot yeah. of people put him under the microscope too much because, like, I think, you know, maybe he did get some team opportunities that he may not have gotten without the land network sort of thing. But at the yeah, same time, he... His, his very start, I guess, people a lot love to scrutinize him because yeah. he was put in a position where he could team with pro players. Cause... Yeah, just because of the situation he was in. So. Yeah, I mean, you can't really hate on him for that. No. Anybody else who was in the same situation would have done the same thing. Exactly. Yeah, so we ended up picking up Tots. And uh, we got, I think we probably got two lands in before the event, which is awesome. And uh, first event was Orlando 2010. So we go in, of course, I already said it, but I'll say it again. It's me, Tots, <laughs> here itself, Noga 2. Yep. And so straight rip in, I guess, with like the top ranked team going into 2010 for some reason. I don't really remember why, but they, they won the They won the 09 finals. Uh, they beat us in the... No, no, no. Wait. The hype won the 09 finals. Believe the hype, that's I guess right. It was an upset over triggers down because there's that yeah. history Xbox debacle, but yeah, it came out in 2009. <laughs> but straight made a roster change where they picked up, I think, Heinz. Okay. Heinz for somebody, so it was like T squared Heinz. Um, I forget who's on the board. But for some reason, everybody thought Stray Urban was like the best team they're going to win. And we ended up playing him in like winner's bracket round two or three, and we took him down. Uh, Tots was doing some weird dances on the feature station course. <laughs> it's pretty great, actually. We were all we we're all on cloud nine back then. <laughs> but anyways, we ended up beating them, and then we eventually went on to the tournament. We lost in the losers bracket finals, and I got third again, which up to that point was still my highest placing. For some reason, 
I, I lost the Blue Finals every single time I'd been in it. <laughs> which is probably about eight times at that point. <laughs> kind of annoying. But uh, yeah, we got third at the first event. Um, what, what, you, what were you doing back in 2010? 2010, let me think. Uh, I know you were in the next Because 08, it was Instinct. 09, it was Carbon, right? And then I think in the off season we tried to make some sort of roster because we took third at 09 finals, yeah, losing man, you to. Carbon squad, I was used to build the final boss squad. I was on like game five. <laughs> we, that's right. You would always say like you'd be up like 2-0 in the first flag yeah, game, or you'd be up like two. <laughs> you guys always had these like epic narrow flag comeback. Like, <laughs> <and> again. <laughs> Is that one of the times too? Like you're in mid game, like guys, we still got this, but you know, you don't got it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you get that helpless feeling where they're just running back the last flag. And oh, just, dude, that's the worst. Was like you, you know you can get an angle on it from like power up something like that on arrows and shoot shots, but you know you're not gonna kill him. Yep. You oh, know you're just gonna get peeled off. Head even if you get a lucky kill on the guy. Yep, exactly. Um, it really is one of the worst. <laughs> but yeah, I'm trying to think. Oh, like 2010, right off the start, we tried to do a brand new roster. That I remember pre land, we just got wrecked so hard. We tried to do it, was uh, we went through a couple changes actually. So, right at the game 2010, um, we dropped Naded, and let's see, it was risky play. So, first off, Shockwave retired. So, our 2009 yeah. roster was Shockwave, Shockwave Defy, the nationals, right? myself, and Naded, yep. So, yeah. replacing Shockwave, um, we picked up Best Man, and then we dropped Naded and originally picked up Strong Side. We didn't even go to a land with them because uh, Best Man Defy, they felt Ghost Yami was better. And after watching some VOD and stuff, I was like, I can't disagree with that. Like, I, I do want to team with friends as much as possible. Obviously, I had a lot of success with Strong Side in the past. And I, I pictured him filling the void that sort of Nated had, where Nated is like the Slayer, can, you know, push up. Like, I figured he could learn that sort of same role. Like, we had just some kind of disputes with Nated. Like, Sometimes it's difficult to practice with and whatnot, like whatever. But even you know, he came to tournaments. He was always a top player for a reason. Um, yep. But he also had some of his downsides too, where it just seemed like he w he wouldn't show up at events, or sometimes it would be difficult to practice with. Like yeah, sometimes I had, early uh, on in his I had career. Yeah, I know a couple of I know all about it. Yep. So um, that's why I tried to replace Naded and ended up uh, going to this first land. I said with Gosiami after going through like a couple changes. Going against Instinct. At the time, we didn't know this roster was that sick, but it was Cloud, Lunch, Roy, and Elamite. Right. And <laughs> at the time, we didn't know it, but like the first series, we get like 3 8 or something like that. It was like 3 to 8. I think we won the first three games, <laughs> then lost like something like 20 plus games in a row. We, we went like, we lost 8 in a row, and then we, we get 11 doed, and I'm just like, we're fucking done for. Like I've heard about some crazy claims from your side that uh <laughs> This wasn't even that land. There was a different one we got rocked so hard. I was just like I got beat the bad uh got beat so hard that I was just like, man, like I remember like glass walls in Halo One getting wrecked so hard I was like I was like, they gotta be cheating. There's yeah, no way I'm this about. bad. And <laughs> started like watching videos, so I was like they'd like turn to the perfect moment and stuff like that. I was going like, crazy, man. <laughs> you actually called him out, didn't you? <laughs> I was like, this got to be happening. <laughs> We're not this bad. But that actually wasn't the very first event. That was before finals when we got wrecked so hard again. Oh, um, okay. Because I remember, I forget, just towards the end, it was that roster was so sick. They were, they were like staking TD, um, yep. like a pit team player, like 50-23. We were getting wrecked that hard. I was like, there's no way they're just that good. Um, <laughs> shenanigans going on. Yeah, some shenanigans. But, yeah. Um, that in the end, I apologize. I was like, I was like, dude, is there some sort of like glass walls that I don't know about now? Because <laughs> I had never been beaten that bad in my entire Halo career, like that consistently at a land. <laughs> it was bad, and yeah, I was embarrassed for saying that stuff. But I ended up apologizing to like the neighbor and Roy and all those guys, and <laughs> looked like an idiot. But it was it was true though. They it's were that fucking good. Now. It is a classic story now, but. Um, we ended up somehow beating that roster at the following tournament, though. Like, right before Nationals, after they had crushed us so hard that land, we beat them to go to, and take third that tournament, or yeah, whatever it was. Yeah, that's crazy when that happened. Yeah. But, anyways, um, I'm trying to think. We, 09 season, wait, we're on 2010 seasons. Yeah, so, yeah. like I said, the first, the first, so I think that was 09 season. When that whole thing happened, yep, yep, yep. And then just getting wrecked that hard began 10, uh, 2010 season, and 
Um, yeah, we didn't know at the time how good that roster was because we just got crushed. I was like, we got to make a change. Like at first, we were gonna try to work it out and make something with Ghost happen, but we ended up just picking up Nated. I want to. I can't remember if we picked up Nated or Strong Side. Pretty sure we picked up Nated. No, maybe maybe we determined Strong Side. I can't remember actually. It was Nated. That started. Uh, yeah, 2010. So before we went to our first tournament, we switched obviously Ghost Yami out and got Nated or Strong Side back. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure it was strong side, because then I think we didn't place well, and we ended up parting ways and going with Nated and placing, like, top two or top three again, something along those lines. Oh, um, boy. I think it was that. I'm yeah, pretty sure. Yeah, you guys sure. were always sneaking up with that carbon roster. Yeah. I always, always found a way to, like, milk top That's two crazy. or something. <laughs> All the times you're milking me. <laughs> Not this time. <laughs> We got Ninja, not only in the chat, but also sub into the channel. So we'll have to get him on for a Halo History soon as well. Probably got a good one. <laughs> but well, we still got Victory on here. Gotta keep going through this. So let's see, 2010, Almost as I talked here. about, we... Let's see, at some point, you guys had to have overcome that Cloud R Lunch Roy roster and stuff, right? So here's what happened. It was actually pretty crazy after the first tournament. Um, we got third, like I said earlier. Yeah. And... Figures down decided that you know dropped Ola right. Yeah. So, so all right. One thing that we've seen recurring through Halo history is that um, <laughs> Macchio and his, and SK seem to make some questionable team changes. <laughs> this could be one of the most questionable of all time. <laughs> so here's what happened. Uh, so after the first event, um, Halo Reach beta had just dropped. So a lot of people were splitting time between Halo 3 and Halo Reach beta. Yeah. And, you know, I just happened to be on one day, and uh, I decided to hop on some Halo Reach beta. You know, why not? It seemed like a fun game. I'd give it a chance. Yeah. And uh, I see Tots playing with, like, the whole TD squad. I thought it was weird because, you know, we're on the same team, and we just played, played pretty well. Third third place, I think, is by far his best placing. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is weird, but, you know, maybe it's just because the rest of us aren't on, and he's trying to play the beta. <laughs> That was always like one recurring, like you'd always have someone, uh, and we got a Roy sub too. We got, we got everyone tuning in for Halo history today. What's up, Roy? That was, <laughs> that was always the scariest thing back in Halo days is like, if you get on and, you know, let's say you got on like five, ten minutes late and you see your teammates playing with someone else, like, uh, uh, how do I take this? Does that mean they're trying someone else out or what does this mean? Yeah. Or like, if that ever happened, you'd get like a text from a friend, like, just say, hey, I'm not saying anything's going on for sure, but just so you know. They're playing customs with this person in place of you right now. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, if the Halo scene was pretty, pretty shady from time to time. They're pretty snuffed. They'd at least appear offline, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Sometimes they'd appear offline, and then you, if you went through a uh, Bungie.net, it'd be like, it'd be like Bungie. going through like an ex's like Facebook post where like, just don't look through their gaming history, man. Don't look through it. You're just gonna see nothing but pain. Yep, yep. <laughs> that was the best. But anyways, yeah, they ended up. Uh, long story short. Tots ended up deciding that he'd be better off joining Trigger Down instead of Final Boss because they had that Hot Pocket sponsor. <laughs> so he always says, he, did, he always says, I did my calculations, man. That was his line for like two years afterwards. He's like, I, I mapped it out and the calculation showed that no matter what, I'd make more money on PD. I, like I don't know the exact specifics on the Hot Pocket, hot pocket sponsor, but right, I don't well, think... It was uh, basically $20,000 20, per player for the oh. season, right? Okay, so that, that is solid. pretty hefty. Yeah. <laughs> have to turn that down. Yeah. So he ended up leaving on a boss, and he hopped on there, and he ended up taking over Stoa's spot, which came with sponsorship, of course, because it was a cheap sponsorship. So you guys did a little swap, swap route right there. Said, yeah, we'll, we'll gladly pick up a little pistola. Yeah, man, it was great. So <laughs> uh, it, took a, it took a couple of days, but I, apparently Ola was contemplating like quitting and stuff. I guess his, he hadn't been as dedicated. That's why... That's why TD dropped him? Because they felt that he hadn't been as dedicated and that his mind wasn't really in the game. That's, alright, for anyone who's going through that sort of mindset, like you have a teammate, someone who has a ridiculous amount of potential, especially a top player like Pistola or whoever it may be, you always gotta have that talk with the player before you do the drop. Guaranteed, because yeah. you never know what they're going through personally. And if you give them the chance of saying, hey, like, you haven't seen Yon lately, we want to see you, you know, we want to team with you if you're playing at your best. And just kind of give them, like, at least that warning call to say, like, hey, so you know, we're not just dropping out of the blue, but 
it is a potential. It's not just going to come out of the blue. I agree. Um, they basically, yeah, they blindsided me. They had no idea it was coming. So it took him a few days to kind of recover from that and uh, get his bearings straight. But yeah. he was friends, and uh, us, us guys who find the boss were able to coax <laughs> him and persuade him to join the team, which he did. So uh, we ended up going into the second event, which was Columbus 2010. Okay. With the roster of OK2 here itself, Stola, and myself. And long story short, we end up. This is my first act, my first appearance in the finals. This event, <laughs> finally made it to the finals. This is your first time. First time making it to the finals, man. It finals, took, finals, damn. It took quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> I think it took like 28 events or something crazy. <laughs> I had, I think I had like nine thirds at this point. I had been in loser bracket finals nine times. <laughs> ever. It was a cur people were saying it was a curse. It was crazy. <laughs> but anyways, we ended up in the finals and we probably lost like uh, three to one or like six to three to. The instinct that that uh, Cloud, Heal Might, Lunchbox, and Roy lineup that you're talking about. Yeah. So we lost to them there, and then we ended up keeping the same roster. Because, you know, second at our first tournament, not bad by any means. No. My best placing, so I was pumped. <laughs> so the next event was. Uh, and as long as it wasn't a stomping, too, it's like you take second at a tournament, you know your potential. It's like, all right, we can win. Oh, yeah. Tournament. I mean, they had a couple more lands of experience. Yeah. Uh, we, still, we still played them pretty good. Yeah. So we go into the next tournament, Charlotte. Or no, not Charlotte. Raleigh, North Carolina. And uh, we end up winning. Pretty handily. Probably 6-2 in the finals or whatnot. Maybe 3-1. I, I think we played Instinct. Beat them. Beat them pretty good. Yeah. Kind of like how they beat us in Columbus. <laughs> Except we came out on top this time. So we won that one. And then next event was DC. And uh, we actually got upset early. Uh, I think for top six, we ended up losing to Dynasty. Okay. So uh, we had to have a long loser's bracket run there throughout Saturday and Sunday. So we ended up facing Triggers down in the finals. And they, to this day, they still complain about this. <laughs> this is the first tournament where they didn't have the winner's bracket finals on Sunday. They had the winner's bracket finals on Saturday night. Really? I have... Pretty crazy, huh? That is crazy, first off. But so what do they complain about if they already knew it was going to happen? So, or did they get blindsided by it and like, oh, they found out five minutes before that they had to play and had no, to play they, with no, each other? No, they knew it was going to happen. They knew it was going to happen? an excuse, of course. It was, yeah, all right, so, all right. <laughs> they play the winner's bracket finals on Saturday night and win. Meanwhile, you know, win the loser's bracket on Saturday night and throughout the whole day Sunday. Playing and warming up, getting some momentum behind this night, winning games, killing. Yeah. It's just smashing other teams. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we end up making it back all the way to the finals against Triggers Down and they had played Saturday night, and we had been playing all day Sunday. <laughs> oh, so they, <laughs> they didn't have a single tournament match that day at all on Sunday. So now, now you can see where the excuse comes into play. Uh, I can see the... I can, I'm not surprised by their excuse, but I don't by any means back it up. Time, you ever did that. <laughs> <laughs> so we ended up beating them in the finals to claim the back-to-back -back, back -back tournament. Um, and then... Last tournament of the year, we keep the same team, of course. I think all the other the top, top three or four teams. Oh, I think the rosters might have been locked. So we had to yeah, might have been locked for the final sort of thing. Yep. Actually, I remember the fact that you guys placed. I want to say it was the event before. Maybe I'm thinking. Maybe I'm getting my years mixed up. 2010, 2011. Either way, the event before you guys were playing. I think it was uh, was it like DH or something like that. They went on like some hot streak, and you guys beat them in the losers bracket. Yeah, some I think point. they got top four at DC. Yes. Long story short, if they would have beat you, and you guys placed lower, they would have enough points to pass us for the nationals. So we wouldn't have even made nationals. At our at that point, I think our roster was something like <laughs> it was it was some crazy <laughs> some crazy roster. It was I want to say it was soldier. Oh yeah, yeah, soldier, Chig, and. SK. Okay. Yeah, we, yeah. we put in some work against you guys first round of nationals. I, I'm gonna say. I recall. I feel like we. I feel like we put in a fight. Did we go to there. game four maybe only? Four. I don't think it was game five. Slayer. Yeah. There. It's definitely. Yeah. yeah like definitely not game five. But I <laughs> felt like we, yes. we we had a good showing at least that match, and then I don't remember. I think we didn't place very high at all. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if we got seven slash eight. Yeah, you guys. I was actually pretty surprised by guys. At uh, <laughs> nationals, 
what was that? What was, where was that? That was Dallas. Yeah, surprised Dallas. how we played or surprised how low we went out at? <laughs> Both after you guys played us so well, to be yeah. honest. I was like, damn, dude, we might lose. <laughs> that was the closest that anybody came, I think. No, no, I think we went to game five with straight that tournament as well. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Okay. But anyways, yeah. Dude, we I feel so slow right now, don't you? Moving around in this game? Yeah, it's because uh, MLG had it at 110%. Yeah, dude, I am... I'm speed walking right now. <laughs> Definitely not running. But uh, yeah, so we won that tournament, ended up going to Nationals as number one seed, because we just won back-to-back -back tournaments. Yeah. And long story short, <laughs> ended, up, ended up winning that for the three beat. <laughs> <laughs> um, beat status quo in the final, surprisingly, instead of Instinct, which was... Surprise. Yeah, Status Quo made that huge run. Um, yeah. They were they were also one of those teams I think kind of had a similar similar like tournament run to you where they just could not break that like top four mold. They just yep. they yep. were stuck there so many times. They would have so many great runs, but they just could not seem to break out of that. Hundred percent. But then luckily they did the final. You know they they made the <laughs> run. They made the run to uh, second place. So. Yeah. Definitely surprised a lot of people. Yeah. And that's why we're talking to a national champ right now. 2010 right. national, national champ. 2010 on the three-peat. <laughs> Hasn't been done since, except for just recently by EG. <laughs> <laughs> so props to them. Uh, they kind of they kind of took over. <laughs> yeah, it was cool to see, like, you know, the final boss legacy back on top at the end there. Oh, yeah. Wasn't cool uh, for me to see, but, yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you had your time. You had your time. <laughs> that's true, that's true. My time. <laughs> <laughs> I sat patiently waiting for years. <laughs> well, yeah. After that, uh, came Halo Reach. Um, you know. And that's I, the end of Halo history. Thank you all for tuning yes, in today. No, seriously. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I decided not to play anymore. I never played Halo Reach. <laughs> Don't ever look up the placings. <laughs> no, but Halo Reach. We ended up going into the same team that we had that just won finals. But I kind of sucked at Halo Reach. Didn't really play it, and we ended up getting like nine. Yeah. Pretty steep decline, and then still on Poker Two, of course, left to join Lunchbox and Roy. Did they and win nationals like drop without dropping a game? Uh, they won a tournament without dropping a game, but it was not nationals. Okay. So, yeah. You know, I honestly I don't remember much of 2011. I probably blocked it out, but yeah, I'm not the best person to ask about that. <laughs> if you wanted to do learn reach. Uh, should have revisit that with Roy because he probably has a whole lot to <laughs> say there. Uh, I gotta go through some other some other people you, out. You got Ninja. First. Ninja. Ninja if Ninja's still in the chat, dude, are you down for a Halo history soon? He, he's uh he was the Reach guy. I teamed with him. For <laughs> you teamed with him, didn't you? I did. Yeah, I had, we, some, uh, I had a fun time teaming with him. It was, you know, he was teaming me sort of dick on uh the, the Walshy decline. It was, I believe you guys beat us. <laughs> <laughs> we did, we did for sure, actually. Yep. I remember that. Um, At a classic, no one really cared reach tournaments except for everybody. And we, we always had our losers bracket battles. We did. To go yeah. for that top twelve. One of them was in. Con I think we played you twice. One was losers bracket. One was even consolation. <laughs> well, um, you just both times. It was pretty, pretty disappointing. Yeah, there's, there's not too many fond memories from me uh, going past. Uh, Going past like Halo 3, even I was gonna say I did I did meet some cool teammates, had some fun times with people, but same time you only have so much fun when you aren't placing where you'd want to be placing. Yeah, Reach was kind of takes it out of it for uh, the Halo tournaments. Um, but yeah, I'll uh, I'll have to visit through some Reach history with Ninja and hear about like his Halo 3 history because I know he had crushed me in like some Halo, Halo, Reach. Halo 3 early event, like not exactly event, but it was a uh, like we had a gamers for giving sort of thing where I met up with Ninja and we had we had something where it's like oh if you like whoever gets the highest score on us gets you know we, we didn't really have too much to give away because we didn't have too many sponsors uh, early on with the charity so we had like some codes to give away for like early early access for beta or some you know like recon skins or something and they just crushed us every game I believe it was him and Lethal or something along those lines <laughs> but um yeah so we'll have to go through that code, huh? some yeah we they they got they got their codes that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, but definitely, you guys would not want to hear my Halo Reach history, so save that uh, for somebody who actually rose to the top, or was winning, or, like, someone like Lethal would be good there. But Ninja would be just as good, so. 
No, yeah, uh, I have I have plenty of Halo history episodes. I'd love to go through with any any pro who's interested. So, if you're uh, if you're a pro and you're watching this right now, even if it's on YouTube, shoot me a text message or send me a DM on Twitter. If I don't follow you on Twitter, you don't have my phone number. We probably aren't doing a Halo history together. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> But um, I'm definitely interested in getting some some notable pros and stuff out here, and just try and do this uh, at least once a week. At least I'm taking a break from school right now, trying to trying to get some more Halo content out there, stream a bit more. So you gotta pass up FB Walshy for the win, man. Yes, I do. the The fake Walshy YouTube channel has more views than my YouTube channel, and more subscribers. You got some good Victory X videos on there if you want to <laughs> check it out sometime. <laughs> but. Uh, anything you want to say in closing, then? Because I think I think we're done with uh, any sort of recent Halo history you want to talk about, unless you want to talk about recent events, like most recent MCC tournaments. But I think that's kind of that's sort of like history in the making, right? Like this is this is covering the old stuff where people got into it. Years and we can talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll have another episode in a couple of years, and we can definitely cover that. So no, I guess I'll just say, uh, be on the lookout for us in uh, PGO in Indianapolis coming up at the end of June. I think Five uh, Nine is going to have a good showing. Yeah. So, yeah. you guys been putting the practice hours in? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know the state of the game right now, but uh, <laughs> definitely once it uh, starts, once it's in fighting form, starts working, you know, we're yeah. going to be hitting it hard, so. <laughs> Any shout outs you want to give? We ran out of gas in, uh, in Atlanta. We, we were hungry. Didn't have any, any food for the whole day. We well, you should have had some uh, quest bars or no. some Red Bull. Not quest bars. Keep going. up next time. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we, we ran out of gas. Ended up getting third, which is cool. But uh, you know how much I hate third these days. So. <laughs> but shout outs. Uh, shout out to Cloud9, man. Sick org. They've been hooking uh, us and the rest of the guys up for several yeah, dude, months this now. This is amazing org dad involved in the, the Halo scene and as a personal sponsor. Yeah, man. Sick. I feel like uh, we gotta, <laughs> They're huge. We got to live up to the Cloud9 name and give them a win this season. I think we definitely <laughs> can, which is great. And uh, shout out to all their sponsors, G2A, BenQ, Zam, Logitech, HTC. All that man, all this—they gave us all this sick gear. Logitech. Currently wearing the headphones. Just real happy with the organization and all these sponsors. It's, it's awesome. Can't That's say. Awesome. So, so you pump for Halo Five then? Pump to see oh, yeah. the Halo scene hopefully take off and get back to where it once was. I'm trying to see some walls back in the scene here. Uh oh, uh, I don't know if we'll be seeing that. What? We'll see. I can't, I can't win 2v2 octagons against Webleys, man. What am I going to do in the, in the <laughs> tournament scene? Hey, I think we could have beat him if it was you and I. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Brandon yeah. was on to tear. Five, uh, <laughs> definitely, uh, it's, got, it's got potential. It's going to be a boatload better than MCC. And uh, I think they're putting a lot of effort behind it, putting a lot of money behind it. So there's going to be a lot of growth. Yeah. Sick tournaments. And hopefully, from what I played in the beta, it's a sick gameplay too. So uh, fingers crossed, it's going to be great. And, uh, Definitely looking forward to it. Definitely still looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. I, I feel the same way. I um, think it has a ton of potential. It seems like 343 is taking it very serious as far as obviously bringing a ton of pros that are working on Halo 5 for a lot of people out there that are asking about MCC. I don't know how much influence, if any, that MC, like the pros had in MCC. They're all working on Halo 5, to my knowledge. Yeah, so, yep. the, the pro team is definitely all, all hands on deck Halo 5. Yeah. I don't even think they touched MCC before Kyle launched, so... Hopefully they uh, put some. Hopefully they have some good perspective on it. And put some cool. Uh, get some cool. You know, get their cool angles involved in Halo Five. You know? Absolutely. And before I close this out, where can people find you? Do you have a uh, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube? Ah, uh, working on the YouTube. Uh, I'll get back to you guys on that one. <laughs> but of course, uh, yeah, I'm on Twitter at C9Victory. Hit me up with a follow. Uh, I gotta start tweeting more, but uh, you can <laughs> find me on there from time to time. I don't. I don't spam. So if you want to non follow a non spammer, you got. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta get more into like the tweeting at the tournaments and all that. <laughs> and then also on Twitch, it's twitch.tv slash victory. Um, I usually stream. I haven't been streaming because the game hasn't been working, but once the game is back in quite in form here, <laughs> uh, definitely I'll be streaming several days. Awesome. Along with my team Cloud9, so follow them as well. Sweet. Well, thank you for joining on. Um, I'm gonna end the YouTube video here. I'm not even gonna say the like, comment, subscribe thing. You guys already know that helps, so like, please do it if you like it. Subscribe for the man. Yep. Um, I'll be doing more of these every week, so stay tuned for the channel. And if you're down to keep playing, I'm down to keep gaming. So. Oh, I'm in, man. You All right. Me. Let me just uh, go. go to the bathroom, and I will be right back. All right. Thanks everybody for watching, by the way, and for continuing to watch. <laughs> <laughs>